Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Truth. Hallelujah. The sick people come, they go back sick. The oppressed people come, they go back oppressed. The only notable thing that happens in that environment is that there are souls being saved. And while that is wonderful and great, what about families that are in bondages? What about destinies that have been tied down? What about people who need to step into the blessings of God? Hallelujah. And eventually the congregations begin to ask questions and say is is god not interested in our personal well-being is he just interested in using us for his glory is he just interested in watching us pray and fast you know interceding for souls and so on and so forth is he just interested in seeing us serve him what do we have what package has he designed is he insensitive to our needs is he unaware of the challenges that our families have hallelujah is he aware that there are doors that have been closed over families and destinies if yes is he interested in doing anything about it hallelujah and it's important that as we minister to god's people we open them up to everything that can be obtained in God. By God's grace, we teach you prayer. We teach you how to walk in the world. We teach you how to live in obedience to God. But we must also expose you to the dimensions of God that can release breakthroughs in your life. Hallelujah. That's why we take testimonies every week. As a symbol of what God is doing in the lives of his people. Because you see, when you receive personal results in your life, you are motivated to follow God. That may not be your primary reason, but it can motivate you. Is that true? When, when you receive phone calls like the gentleman who just shared, where's the gentleman that shared about his mom? You can imagine. Now he comes for the meeting and then while he's sitting under the at atmosphere of God's presence, his mom gets healed somewhere. Hallelujah. Do you believe this guy has been motivated to press more into God? Believers are motivated if you... See, he said, when John the Baptist sent that they should ask Jesus Christ if he was the Messiah, he didn't answer the disciples. He just turned and began to heal the sick. Began to do miraculous things. And then when he was done, he told John, he told the disciples, say, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words... The kingdom of God should find visible expression. The kingdom of God represents the entirety of God's sovereignty. His power. If God is as powerful as we preach, if God is as great, if he's as loving and caring as we teach, then don't you think that at a point in your life, your life should experience some testimonies that can encourage you, that you can have a message for yourself and say, I have seen the hand of God in my life. I have seen the intervention of God. I've seen breakthroughs in my families. And I told God something. I said, Lord, 
I never want to be part of a ministry that does not have results. Hallelujah. I don't want to just come and deceive God's people. And it's not enough just to fall down and stand up. If you're falling down, it's not producing results. You will get angry one day. Hallelujah. But thank God we have a God that is alive and is doing wonders in our midst. Hallelujah. And so I'm sharing on activating breakthroughs. In my personal life and in my journey in the spirit, there are four things that characterize seasons of breakthrough in a man's life. Please take this teaching very seriously. Four things. Every time a man is about to step into prophetic defining moments moments of breakthrough i'm not just talking of one testimony here realms of breakthrough where god is about to step into a life and truly do something notable there are four things that happen when you approach that season of your life i'm teaching you this so that you can know and relate with these seasons when they come hallelujah again one of the things i learned watching the film lord of the rings is the fact that they were warriors from different kingdoms and what made these people warriors was not just the ability to fight but the ability to understand seasons hallelujah when other men just stumbled into seasons those men could look and discern I remember one of them looking and seeing a red cloud and he said blood had been shed in the night the ability to look when other people are just looking you are standing from a plane in the spirit and you are saying this has happened because something is happening the wise men hallelujah the wise men saw a star and while other people were saying ah, ah why is the earth shining like this they understood that this is a message in the realm of the spirit that they ought to respond to hallelujah so while the star was supposed to lead men to where jesus was some other people just looked and they were moving around and they were happy yet others were taking advantage of the seasons so i don't just want you to interpret the happenings around life from an earth realm hallelujah I want you to be able to see prophetic things that when you see handwritings on the wall you don't just pass it many people have missed out on seasons of breakthrough because they have not been taught to discern moments of breakthrough in their life many families would have risen from where they are, from where they are into the prophetic destiny that God has for them but because they do not know how to understand spiritual things so follow me tonight four things number one when a major season of breakthrough is about to open up in your life the first thing that happens is that there is an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer whenever you begin to sense an irresistible urge to pray an irresistible urge to pray not just to pray with in a group know that these are prophetic signposts these are languages in the spirit that are pointing to you that you are about to step into a major season of breakthrough and i'll explain to you why these things happen spirit of prayer how many of you have sat down and suddenly you cannot tell it's not like you are not prayerful but maybe over a period of three or four days or one week you cannot rest you are praying every time you are partnering with what is happening in the realm of the spirit you may not even know but because you have yielded yourself to the holy spirit the holy spirit must not always speak to you his ultimate um desire is to lead you not just to speak to you that your body comes to a point where even without speaking to you you can permit him to carry out what the bible says the holy ghost drove jesus to the wilderness he didn't say jesus let's go jesus's body was so yielded to the holy ghost that he just found himself moving at the impulse of the holy spirit and the bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going such is one 
who is led of the spirit. So every time you are about to step into prophetic seasons of breakthrough. You know what a breakthrough is? A breakthrough is when the barrier that is limiting you from stepping into the next level of your life is about to be lifted or is lifted. That's a breakthrough. When there is a stronghold, when there is a mountain, when there is a limitation, when there is a resistance that would not allow you to push through to that next level of life in destiny. By whatever spiritual agency, when that barrier is lifted, we call it a breakthrough. So number one, what? The spirit of prayer. Suddenly you see someone who may not even pray for an hour, but you find out that there is grace to pray. Grace to pray. While you're praying, it's like there's an endless supply. While you're praying, you can sense in the spirit that things are happening. You cannot tell what it is that is happening. But you know that the more you press, your prayer is doing something and is having an effect in your spirit directly. Sometimes you begin to pray and you get to a point in your spirit where you can even start laughing. I'm not talking of laughing in the spirit. Joy that you cannot explain. Because a cord is being hit in the spirit. But many people, when they get to that point, because they do not know the significance of that dimension of prayer, they do not partner with the angels to bring in complete breakthroughs. And they go back and miss out on cycles and seasons of breakthrough that would have come. Are you getting blessed? Number two, when you are about to enter a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life, the second thing that happens is an unusual grace to give. An unusual grace to give. An unusual grace. When you are about to step into those prophetic seasons, suddenly you lose value of everything around you. You just know that I can give anything and it won't matter again. When that begins to happen to you, take note. Have you gotten to a point where you sit down and just look at your clothes and you can carry about 20 or 30 percent of them and just say i'm going to sew it and i tell you there is a dissociation between you and those things is because you are about to step into a new level you see how many of you have missed out on such seasons because you did not know how to take advantage if you could take advantage of it you would have stepped into major seasons of breakthroughs this that i'm teaching you is born out of the word of god and practical experiences hallelujah there are many of you who can just be walking and the next thing god tells you go for a retreat quick you are supposed to travel god just summons you and says go for a retreat the moment that happens make sure nothing is too important to make you cancel that appointment hallelujah because that's not just your normal prayer for spiritual growth it is a call to contend with the things in the heavens so that you will step into a prophetic season in your life. So number one, the spirit of prayer, an unusual urge to pray, to travel in the spirit. You just find yourself blessing the Lord. You're sleeping in the night and God wakes you. That sleep cannot come back again. And you're just praying in the spirit. That's a sign that a door it's about to open for you in the spirit. But many of you wake up. And when you see your colleague sleeping. Just say Kai. Let me just. 15 minutes exactly. By the grace of God I won't add 15 minutes. You even put one leg down on your bed. So that you can wake up. And you wake up and see that it's 6 o'clock. And you see the Holy Spirit does not struggle with the human spirit. Are you listening to me? Because it's not a demon. The moment he begins to communicate to you, it's a language in the spirit. He's telling you, watch this. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Can you stand? So that you will step into this major season. Hallelujah. Number two, an unusual urge to give. Not just, I'm not just talking of giving money alone, but suddenly you get to the point where nothing that you have it's like a string that connects the things that you have and you is suddenly broken away from your life. 
and you know at that point if God asks you to empty your bank account or if God asks you to give it anything you can lose it including your family members it's not like you don't love them I'm just giving you languages in the spirit you know that there's nothing nothing and you find out that you know that by the kind of songs you sing in your place of prayer you begin to sing songs of surrender and commitment you don't even know why you are singing those songs have they ever raised a song for you and you know this is not the song that communicates what God is saying it's not bad but mm -mm, this is not the song hallelujah when you step in church and they just sing a song we can sing a powerful song like um more of you more of you it's nice but it doesn't strike a chord in your spirit and even you you think you are backsliding no no you just sit down you are not you are not connecting you are even feeling guilty about it you are wondering why you are not connecting hallelujah then suddenly they raise another song i lay it all down again and you start crying you don't even know what is happening it's a reaction to a season that your spirit is relating with the moment they begin to sing that so anything that has to do with laying it down forgetting about it you know your spirit picks it up and that's the song you're just singing may not make sense to you but you are getting into defining moments that will open up prophetic seasons of breakthrough are you getting blessed tonight number three when you are about to step into major seasons of breakthrough i mean major seasons number three there will be an unusual confrontation from the kingdom of darkness suddenly you notice that is as if all hell is breaking loose over you as if the satan i mean the devil just told all the demons say look just leave everybody chase wumi find wumi anywhere you see her look for her hallelujah have you seen people like that so it looks like the more they are praying for you the issue is getting worse hold on that's the time to begin to see from the realm of the spirit because many people are taught to judge these things do you know why you see satan does not know your future but the moment a prophetic word is uttered what happens there is an unusual manifestation of angelic activities suddenly it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit what because they know that satan knows he was an angel before i hope you know so he knows that every time there is an unusual dispatch of angels something is about to be translated from the realm of the spirit into this realm hallelujah and suddenly confrontations from the power of darkness they begin to bring arrows of discouragement impatience procrastination offense suddenly you find out that a major season is about to enter your family and your father and mother are quarreling for trivial issues. Why did you bring the tea in this green cup? Is this the cup I use every day? And you are wondering, you are like, daddy, what is this whole thing? If you learn to judge from the spirit, you see why you start by unusual ability to pray. Because there will be contentions. Are you getting blessed tonight? Suddenly, you are just getting offended with people for reasons they cannot tell. Someone looks at you and says, beautiful hair. You say, eh, mock me. Ah, even you, you are finding what is wrong. People say, you are being so edgy. You are being offensive. What is wrong? Say, even me, I don't know what is happening. But God is telling you, go and pray. Because you are stepping into prophetic moments. Are you listening to me? The powers of darkness are finding access points that they can step into your life. And on legal grounds, hinder what God wants to do. Are you seeing why praise is a tool for victory? You see why God will give you? Are you seeing that? This is why sometimes when breakthroughs are about to come, God will distract you with praise. So that before you realize the breakthrough can come. So you lock yourself and you are just dancing in it. You don't even know why you are dancing. Because with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation. Many people have lost it at this point. 
Suddenly you find out that everybody is just offending you. You are about to go and pray. You are sensing in your spirit. And somebody comes and says, let me tell you something. Selina, um, I wouldn't have told you, but let me tell you. Do you know what your sister said? And you are like, what again? These are dangerous seeds that, that will stop you from entering prophetic moments of your life. Hallelujah. Or you are about to go and pray and then a call comes. And your mother says, do you know what happened? There was an accident. Ah -ah. In your dreams, you are seeing your family members rejoicing. You haven't seen them cutting cake. In the physical, you are hearing that one car has. At such times, many people just dampen their spirit. The Bible says, for as long as the hands of Moses kept, it, it was up. What happened? There was victory. When Aaron and her were tired and they began to bring the hand, what happened? How can a man's hand control the victory that is happening in a war front? Many people do not understand spiritual pathways. And I'm telling you, the more you have this knowledge, the more you will reign in life. Unusual confrontations. In fact, for some of you, they may even be direct confrontations. You're just walking and for the first time you hear a voice saying you will die. You will die. And you carry that mindset. It's a seed that the devil wants to sow into your life. That's the day you got up and found out that your shirts that they eye on your roommate wore and say, hey, God, let me kill somebody today. Where is she? prophetic moments notice that the moment that season is aborted all those disturbances just minimize and you can live your normal life are you are you listening to me prophetic seasons and then number four number four is suddenly you will begin to attract certain people called destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. There will be prophetic, unusual encounters. Please let me have two people. My God, open our eyes tonight. Teach us mysteries in the spirit. Come, you stand up here, Kenny. Sam, just stay down. Hallelujah. Watch this. This is a level. Look up, everybody. This is a level. Is that correct? This gentleman wants to step into this level. And he has been walking. Now he has gotten to this prophetic shift. Hallelujah. While he's praying and fasting, this is what happens. Can I have a third person? Anybody? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Suddenly, God. You just be walking, Sam. Yes, just be coming. And God comes and causes you to intercept at the exact time with certain people he calls destiny helpers. Their job, hold his hands, is to help you and guide you to step up and they will leave. Sam, you climb, climb up, Femi, go back. That's their job. Sometimes they will come into your life just once and you may never see them again. Follow me tonight. God bless you, sirs. Four things happen to believers. This is the structure of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. When Jesus was going to go and bring a major breakthrough to a man who was possessed of devils and to go and preach in Gadara, what happened? They were in the boat, in, the, in, the, in their boat. Is that correct? Suddenly, the sea started getting boisterous. Question. Was that the first time they were going by sea? I hope you realize that the sea was not just doisterous. It was the demons, the legions of devils that were in the man at Gadara that were reacting, attempting to stop them from coming. Hallelujah. Notice, did you notice that the disciples started getting angry at Jesus Christ? They got offended. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When Jesus woke up, he knew that he needed to calm them down and he said shalom what happened 
The Bible tells us that that madman used to stay in caves. Who told him Jesus was coming? Because the moment Jesus stepped into Gadara, he was there waiting. He was the first person he met. Hallelujah. Did you hear the lady that came to share the testimony about her father? That ev how can a man be having accidents every month? When I don't watch so much of football, but when you are in a serious match, I don't mean friendlies just to shake yourself and change jerseys. Real match that can change the destiny of a nation. Hallelujah. When you are about to score, what happens? The people, they tell them, do everything. Quacking, killing, just do everything. Stop this guy from score. You find out that the hostility increases. Because at that point, a single goal can make the difference. Are you understanding this? Many people and many families have missed out on cycles. It's like a spiritual cycle. When you miss it, it will come back, but it won't come back immediately. So your job is to stand and discern. When you see that cloud moving, you begin to walk with the Holy Ghost to make preparations for the things that God wants to release. Hallelujah. I'll not talk about the first three. I'll talk very briefly about the last one. Destiny help us. Who are these men? Who are these strange beings that seem to come to, to, to stand by people in the path of destiny? Please write. Destiny help us are men and women that we find on our road to breakthroughs. Our road to destiny. Who provide help for the next level of our lives our miracles and our destiny. There are men that we meet on our path to destiny. I'm going to be showing you from God's word and you'll see how consistent this is. Say in the name of Jesus, I activate breakthroughs in my life. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 41, if you turn there, the story of Joseph, Look up, please. Joseph had a great destiny. Is that correct? He had a dream and he told his brothers. He said, brothers, I saw you people bowing to me. The brothers said, you will see, we'll kill you before that will happen. And they sold him. Is that correct? Do you realize, let me show you all the people that played a role in that journey. The Bible says it was at the time he entered the well that certain Egyptians were passing. Why did they not pass before or after? Forget the fact that they bought him. But they were the vehicles that transported him. He didn't pay transport fare. They transported him into where? Potiphar's house. Do you know that Egypt was his geographical location of breakthrough? Are you listening to me? So how was he going to go there? His father would never allow him to go to Egypt. I hope you know. And so, certain Egyptians, in the name of buying him, while they were carrying him, he did not know that prophetically, there were angels and activities that were pushing him to the place of destiny. Hold on. When he gets to Egypt, the Bible says that he went into the prison. Now watch this. Every time you are about to take a journey into destiny, before you start, God will show you something that you will hold in that journey. For Moses, it is a rod. For Joseph, it is a dream. God will say, note it. One day, we'll make reference with. You will never start your journey without knowing what he gave you. Many of us have thrown it. That jar is it, it, no good because it does not look. For Moses, he said, you hold this rod. A day will come. When he got to that point in the Red Sea, he said, remember the rod. Now Moses, stretch that rod. A time has come for the ministry of that rod to come in. Hallelujah. For Joseph, he had nothing but a simple dream. A simple dream. Are you following me tonight? He had a simple dream. 
And while these guys were taking, did he like it? But he was going to the geography of his breakthrough. When he got there, what happened? And this is the sign. Because while he was going, the Bible says God was with him. This is how you know God is with you. Because even in the midst of these things, you see favor. The favor and the grace of God. And the Bible says he went into prison. What happened? He was faithful. And Potiphar made him the head of everything except his wife. Watch this. Then comes this dangerous woman who sees this handsome Egyptian. Hallelujah. And on account of his work with God and his loyalty to his master, what happened? The Bible says he ran and he left his clothes there. Do you know if Joseph had slept with her, he would have just been happy and gone back to the prison in the evening and he would have remained there. Who know that he slept with her? But he would have remained in the prison there. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Joseph was in the prison and God made it in such a way that it was when Joseph was coming to the prison that the wine presser and the baker for some reasons they annoyed the king. The king said go and lock them. The king let's explain. Say, go and lock them. And while they locked them there then Joseph steps in. Watch this. He looks at them and Joseph is worried about their state. They woke up in the morning and the Bible says their countenance was very bad. Hallelujah. And the wine presser said, I have a dream. Why did God create a need that only the gift in Joseph could solve? Are you following me now? God knew that he had given Joseph grace for dreams. Then he created that need. And the wine presser got up. Please listen. He said, I had a dream. I saw this and that and that and this and that happened. And Joseph told him, he said, wow, in three days, the king is going to call you back and you'll be reinstated to your position. The guy laughed. He said, please, when you go, don't forget me. The other guy said, ah, me too, I have my own. No. He said, what is wrong? He said, there were three baskets on my head. And vultures came and ate everything. Joseph said, well, in three days, they'll finally finish up your case. They'll bring you out and they'll go and hang you. And the birds of the air will eat up your flesh. Watch this. Joseph did not know that those two people, they did not have gift, but they had access to the king that could bring Joseph. Are you seeing? Destiny helpers may not be gifted people, but they have access you have the gift but you don't have access to the king they have access to the king but they may not have the gifts hallelujah it came to pass like that and after the wine presser was reinstated the bible says he forgot joseph but watch this when it was time for joseph to step into the place of destiny what happened god now since the one the wine presser forgot him i'm sure joseph would have been disappointed you now see that he would have been angry and said, oh, two years. This guy kept me in this captivity and I helped him. But something happened. The Bible says that God gave the king a dream. You see it now? When God is ready to lift you, those who matter, he will give them a problem they cannot solve and shut every door until your gift answers to it. That's how God lifts a man. Please listen. I'm teaching you a powerful mystery. Because every king, they had sorcerers and soothsayers. This is Egypt we are talking about. Egypt had thousands of gods they could consult. But that day God shut the heavens. The magicians did everything. The heavens would not open. And the king said, you better answer my dream. You better find the solution. Kings were cruel people those days. They could wipe out the whole land because they were angry. Suddenly the magicians consulted and said, what is happening? They said, we don't know. And then the wine presser said something. Watch this. 41. Verse 9. 41. Verse 9. Are you there? Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh saying, I do remember 
my faults this day. So after two years, the man remembered. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison. In the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. Listen. And we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dreams. Listen. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, now hold on. Do you know, while all of this was happening, Joseph did not know that he was at the edge. Are you listening to me? If he had missed a defining moment, he would have remained in that prison. Sometimes, could it be that you are just a night away to a major breakthrough in your life? Have you heard that song? I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. Powerful song. Many believers have gotten to the edge and then Satan comes in with something that aborts the whole journey. Thirteen, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us. So it was. Now, listen. If Joseph had his way, listen. If Joseph had his way and he ever met Pharaoh once, do you know Pharaoh will be so impressed with Joseph that you say, why are you in the prison in the first place? But sometimes, do you, see the irony of life. You can see a gifted person who graduated and he's so good. And here is somebody who is a blessed man who needs that gift. But the, that contact. Are you listening to me? There are many of our loved ones that are gifted. I heard the story of a gentleman who fan caught his, some of his fingers. And then suddenly it was like an anointing came upon him. And that guy could draw, you know, um, fine art students. He could do what they call it, um, abstract on the wall. Praise God. And then this guy had been praying to God and said, Lord, give my family a major breakthrough. Because his mother told him, I didn't go to school. Your hands are cut, but do something. Go and learn something. And this guy was praying. Watch this. When that was happening, the Holy Ghost began to give him ideas. He said, begin to do your abstract on plenty papers and store them. Every time you see this guy drawing, people are saying, your colleagues are going out to look for a job. He said, but God told me this. Watch this. Suddenly, one day, he went to visit his friend. Huh? When he went to visit his friend, his friend was talking with someone and it so happened that they just opened the branch. This is a true story. They opened the branch of a bank. You know banks do abstract on their wall and they had been looking for someone. The person who used to do it for the bank, he did something nasty and the bank got angry with him and suddenly they just said, ah, but don't you draw. The guy came there with his file. He was ready. They said, meet at so-so-so place and he went. Do you know that, that day, he got a contract of over 4 million naira overnight. Why? Hold on. It wasn't just because the people that connected him did not even know the gravity of what they were doing. Do you realize that your destiny helpers do not know they are destiny helpers? God conceals it so that they will not corrupt what he's trying to do through them. The destiny helpers themselves never know they are destiny helpers until the miracle happens one day when you are saying it. The wine presser, if the wine presser knew that he was sitting close to someone who would be the prime minister of, of Egypt, you think he would treat him the way he treated him? Hallelujah. And then, let me rush. They call Joseph. I like, I like, I like the way. Let's look at um, verse 14. 14. Are you there? 41 verse 14. And Pharaoh sent, listen. Pharaoh sent at the recommendation of who? A destiny helper. The wine presser. The wine presser said, I testified that there was a time I needed help. Hallelujah. And a Hebrew guy called Joseph. By this time, do you know what it means to stay two years in the prison without shaving? Without You don't have the luxury of shaving and this. You were looking like a, a native doctor. And the Bible says, I'll show you from scripture. Verse 14. And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of where? The dungeon. 
It's only your destiny partners that can connect you to come out of some dungeons. You may be gifted, but you will remain in some dungeons until some destiny partners come. Do you know that many of our family members, they are praying in tongues and they are gifted. Let me announce to everybody here, there is something you have that is in desperate demand. The distance between you and your place of honor is a destiny helper. If you never find this destiny help us, you can die a failure in life. I've seen this happen so many times. Hallelujah. When we were about to get the venue for this place, when God began to speak to us about Koinonia, we were praying. You know how difficult it is to get venue. Hallelujah. We were even looking for a place to pay for. And I began to pray. I began to pray. And I had a number of options. And when I was praying, the Lord showed me, said, you will use CGC. I really didn't know. I administered only once or twice in the ministry. I said, Lord, how can you use people's auditorium? And then you start. And God said, you hold on. But he had taught me the ministry of destiny helpers. So I knew better. Are you following me now? And I knew which tool to engage. Not random, foolish prayer pointless arrow you have ak-47 you're just shooting everywhere you need to direct with target that's what many believers are doing we just pray but we do not know the bible says through wise counsel make war you can you can minimize wasting bullets many people just pray everywhere and say break to wherever you are let him meet you calm down you can walk with wisdom and walk circumspectly i began to pray because i knew that all I needed was a destiny. Do you know it does not take more than 24 hours for God to change a man's story. God just needs to bring a man. Your father has been praying. He's a good architect. And there are people begging. Begging. They want to build estates. They are begging. Can there be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit? See. There's no time I would have given you stories of how people's lives have changed overnight. I hope you believe what I'm teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Joseph the Bible says and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it and Joseph answered Pharaoh and said it is not in me God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace hallelujah and then he interprets the dream. Verse 32. It's amazing when your gift begins to speak in the place where it is honored. Do you know something? Listen. Your gift will never speak in a place they don't value and honor it. Hallelujah. That's why you can see someone who is a worshiper. He goes somewhere to minister. It's not the place of his honor. They don't even honor it. But he can step into another place. Your gift will always create an effect where it was designed to be honored always hallelujah 32 and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass look at the ease at which joseph was interpreting this dream and the magicians were all watching god orchestrated an event where all the all the senate members of egypt were gathered and they were listening see listen whenever god begins to prepare a table before you learn to discern from the spirit because he will be taking you to a place you never dreamt of he'll lead me and guide me to the city up above he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny I know he leads me and he guides me to the city up above 
Lord, you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh seek out a man. He didn't know he was talking about himself. Desperate and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh and let him keep food for the cities. Just jump verse 39. This is where a man's breakthrough comes. After 12 years of misery, being transported into his destiny by people he did not like, facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lifting 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown ye all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art immediately without prayer without fasting help me read verse 41 to read and thou shalt be over my house no interview no meeting with any council member kings did not make stupid decisions they met with their wise men. But the king announced he vetoed it. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. See I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Five minutes ago a prisoner five minutes later the prime minister my god how can you explain this the people who shaved him say so we were shaving the prime minister the people who dressed him and imagine pharaoh who took him to the prison i mean potiphar now he had become lord imagine what potiphar's house wife would do hear me friends god is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families it does not cost him so much all you need is the man that requires what God has given you. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. Your mother has a large poultry farm. There is a major hotel that is being constructed. One manifestation of destiny help us at a recommendation they can begin to say madam begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel leaves see friends every man i know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny help us to enter fearful mind-blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny Let's look at Jesus. We call him the king of kings. We call him the lord of lords. But let's see all the people that play different parts in the life of Jesus. Did you know? The Bible says. I don't know if I should read it. Alright, let's read it. Luke 2. Let's hurry up. Because we are going to do some prayer this night. Hallelujah. Prayer this night. I shared it with the leaders on Sunday. God began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very, very, very significant way. And we prayed in that light. Luke 2, verse 25. Luke 2, verse 25. This is the story of Jesus. Are you there? And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a righteous and devoted man waiting for the consolation of israel and the holy spirit was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the holy spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the lord jesus hold on look up this guy called simeon hallelujah the bible says god told him he would not see death his job was to wait until he prophesies into the life of jesus before he would die are you seeing 
We don't hear the names of all these people in scripture. But tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior. Hallelujah. And then he prayed and prophesied. Let's look at verse 36. So one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus. Simeon. Number 2. 36 now. And there was one Anna. Listen to how the Bible describes her. What does he call her? One Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. And one Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that Jesus be born. Are you seeing that? There was a woman behind the scene, a destiny helper, praying and fasting at age 84 that Jesus would come. That, that what has been prophesied let me tell you if there were no people to pray they would have killed Jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities they would have killed him and there would not be redemption for mankind destiny help us we don't honor them the Bible never talks about Simeon again the Bible never talks about Anna again are you following me please destiny help us at the death of Jesus the Bible says listen that when Jesus had carried the cross he had bled so much and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind. But there was no more strength and what happened? He fell. At the point where he was falling, one black man meandered that road called Simon of Cyrene. Are you following me now? And they said, Simon, come. They didn't ask him whether he had eaten or not. They didn't ask him where he was going. They just said, Mr. Man, pick up this cross. What happened? A destiny helper. He carried the cross. Cruel men. No devil can resist your destiny helpers. If you, These were men who would not allow Jesus to drink water. But they allowed a man to carry his cross for him. And Simon helped Jesus. And so Jesus could regain some strength. The Bible says that when Jesus died, there was another strange rich man called Joseph of Arimathea. He had a virgin tomb because the prophets had, been, had prophesied that none of his bones would be broken and that he would be buried in a tomb that is virgin. So God had led one man to buy a grave. How can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death? He didn't even know why he bought it. Remember when Jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry. The Bible says a man had tied a coat. He didn't tell us the man. He said go and tell the man the master had need. At once he released the coat. Are you seeing all the people that played parts? When you watch your Jesus of Nazareth. They silence those people. And so you don't even know. You just see Jesus. But without these people in his life. The Bible talked about the wise men once. They didn't tell us anything about them again. It talked about the shepherds. They didn't tell us anything about them again. Now Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says Joseph of Arimathea was an influential man. It was on account of his influence. So a rich man was required for the redemption of men. It was the rich man that used his influence and went and said, give me the body of this man, let me bury. If not, they would have left Jesus to hang on the cross there. Are you listening to me? Now we don't follow up these stories very well. And they took him to a virgin tomb and they laid him there. Look at all the people that played roles in the life of Jesus Christ. Moses, 
another man. The Bible says when they were killing Hebrew children, you remember? His mother put him in a basket. The word Moses means to come out of a basket. The mother put him in a basket. And do you know that she put a Hebrew material in the basket and pushed him? How can a mother? That was a sign of desperation. She said, let me just push him. Oh God, guide him. Suddenly, the water started leading Moses to a place. For no reason, Pharaoh's daughter just said, I'm not taking my bath. Don't they have bathrooms here? I will go to the stream. This stream. At the exact point where the baby was coming, that was when she was bathing. And the Bible says she had the sound of a child. She would have said, go and kill him. When she saw it, she started laughing. Her father gives an instruction to kill people. The daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill. Destiny help us. Look at the drama that happens in the spirit. Your father gives an instruction. It was really Moses they were looking for. But now, Moses was in the house and they were killing other people. That was the deliverer. The mother, a Hebrew woman, she didn't have much. But do you know what happened? When they pushed Moses, the daughter got and then the maid of the mother came and suggested, say, do you want a nanny? They said, of course. He went and brought Moses' mother to come and be a nanny for her own son and they paid her for it. <laughs> Destiny help us. I want you to see that this is no coincidence at all. No threat. Moses grew up. He ate well. He was nourished. No join this. No nonsense because there was an assignment waiting for him. He was in perfect shape. Hallelujah. Have you been taking note of certain people? Many of us have been cheated. Because we have neglected these strange sets of people. We live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of God. Could it be that after the prophecy from the men of God, there are ordinary people? Some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever. Are you getting blessed? The Bible tells us that a man called Saul was persecuting Christians everywhere and having met with God with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus he said he should go to the house of who? Judas and stay there who is that Judas? we don't know he just said go and stay in his house destiny help us he stayed there three days and then they sent a man called Ananias we heard about him once didn't hear about him again and Ananias came and said brother Saul Jesus whom you saw sent me that I should lay my hands upon you that you should be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive your sight when that happened he went away the Bible says a certain time came they met one prophet called Agabus he came out from wherever we don't know a man called Agabus all his daughters were prophets and he gave a prophecy hallelujah You read all through the Bible and see several people. Ruth and Naomi haven't lost her husband, haven't lost everything. The Bible says that Ruth told Naomi, say, my God will be your God. and my, Your God will be my God, your people, my people. The Bible says while they stood, a man just came out from wherever. Called Boaz, and he told the people, We don't know who those people are. He said, As you glean, leave some of the food. Their names were not mentioned. Just leave some food so that she can go and take care. Brothers and sisters, if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life, listen to me, you may never arrive your destiny no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you there are many women who will not get married because the person who will connect them with their life partner is not there someone can just tell you come come with us hallelujah let's go for fellowship somewhere pastor um, Femi stand up just go and stand there 
and God will orchestrate it in a way please sit down make yourself very comfortable hallelujah praise God now this lady sits down she has been praying for a life partner if you have not been praying about it you better start praying she has been praying oh God a godly man a man who loves and fears you and what happens we cannot even find a friend again who invited her and she sat down and while she sat down Sam is worshipping now listen come Sam Sam gets up and Sam is lifting his hands as we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory what happens while Sam is moving left and right doing the business of the father suddenly Sam finds out that he's been drawn to this role Sam will move this way and Sam will be drawn and then a preacher like me will say talk to your neighbor and says your time to be blessed and Sam turns and says your time to be blessed and the Holy Ghost will say did you hear what you said Hallelujah. A few years after they are happily married. And when you ask them what happened. They say someone. That's what they say. Someone. The someone may be in the congregation. But may not even know. That he or she was the person. Who made this happen. Are you listening to me? Destiny help us. Many people have missed out. Every time. You are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life. Make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect the people that begin to come around you. Because some of them may not even be Christians. Somebody can just come drunk with beer. It may even be your loved one. And for the first time, you will say something sensible in years. You say, ah, you didn't go for fellowship this night. Then you hiss and go back. And God will say, your address. As you are coming in, that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder, oh God, why are you not changing my story? Hallelujah. This is very important. I have seen this happen in my life. When God showed me that this would be the venue. How it was going to happen, I knew. Listen, the next time you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life. Don't think he's just going to come by an angel flapping his wings and says, take. Men, men have been God's instrument of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something tonight? Am I challenging you? And then we met Prof. And Prof just came and spoke to the church once. Once. And they came till today. Since we started in March 2011, we have not had to pay one naira for this auditorium to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In this same area, destiny help us. It's not a big thing for it's not a big deal for many of you until the day you get into positions where you will require the help of men are you listening to me many of us have pushed our destiny helpers away either because they do not carry forms that's the problem we have with people who segregate people we are not the rich ones we are the ones who our fathers are senators what is your father capital leave this place we are the ones who are intelligent. What's your CGP 1.5? Get out of here. Hallelujah. We are the ones who are smart. We attended Queen's College. Which church did you, which, which school did you attend? One school, they have even forgotten the name. Leave this place. We are the ones who went abroad. We spent six years abroad. Where have you gone out from? I've just been in my local government. I've not even gone out. Leave this place. 
when you begin to treat people that way get set for a rude shock in life because your destiny helpers will never assume forms that will attract you to them you must have a discerning grace to look beyond them some of them may be visitors every time they come to your house you know they are coming to collect your father's money but maybe that day maybe that day that day it could be some gatekeepers in your house every time you look at them Adamu, Adamu, how I say, well done, how are you? You are insulting the man. One day you look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her, for a job interview in all sincerity she did not have any money the mom did not have money there and it was her neighbor who was a gate man she begged him it took a lot of humility for her to beg him guy said give me my money i said make sure you give me and i think he gave her was it 500 or 200 she transported herself got that job when she got the job they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first where they would take her are you listening to me gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house this is true life story hallelujah all that lady that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man the gate man was resting little did he know his breakthrough was coming she just gave him a bike he left the work immediately immediately many of you in life listen to me this is a powerful message many of you in life have neglected certain people you may stand and look at this brother and just say kite i beg jerry many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them you need to stop that demonic attitude the day i don't need anything from you you are not my friend again the day necessity brings it suddenly ah uh -uh, pastor femi we need venue you are his friend if that is your attitude you will miss out on many prophetic you can see someone the person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice thank god for the ten thousand naira one your father bought for you the person may not have what you have but he has and he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere every prayer point every prayer point i tell you if you are praying for a job that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold one note can change a man's destiny activating breakthroughs through the ministry of destiny helpers could this be why some of us are where we are today could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are the gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says don't tell him that i'm around could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever we are going to be praying hallelujah we are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny helpers that we have allowed to slip to our hands we are going to be praying for sensitivity many of you treat everybody bad you treat people rude you are hostile you talk to people you say that's how i am because you feel you have your world met together a day will come you will find out that what you have you don't have access to a king and it is god that will connect you there hallelujah today by the grace of god many places where i go and minister I don't know those who told them about me they just said we heard about you who were the people who popped the bible said it was noised abroad that jesus was in town we do not know i only will pray for those people in my secret place that god will bless and honor them you may never know never know sometimes we just get seeds from people coming into the ministry account we don't even know the people could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day are you listening to me see i am convinced that it does not cost god a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family 
I was told about a man who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, just a, a, a little car. And then one day, when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like their elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see for hours they were just in. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly, he said, what car? He said, golf. The man laughed. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day, you should come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. Because many people brag with the monies of their parents. My father is a senator. My mother is a this. There are many people who were healed in Koinonia here. We still do not know who brought them. Someone referred them on the road. Told them, do this, do that. And they came and they got healed. I made up my mind never to. That's why I treat people with love and honor and respect. You don't know who. It could be a little girl like this, my sister. She may just look at you. And pray a prayer for you. And say, God just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say, bless you. Suddenly, you see every door opening and you are like, what in the world is going on? Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Sometimes God can lead you to a meeting. You don't know the name of the ministry. You don't know the name of the man of God. You don't know the name of anybody. You don't know the ushers that brought you. All you know is that one word was declared. You carry that word, you went back. Most times, you never get to see your destiny helpers to tell them thank you. There are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer. Grace to pray like never before. Number two, a heart to give suddenly there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have number three demonic confrontations that attempt to discourage you number four they begin to come destiny help us they come as phone calls they come as friends they come as enemies they come as unprofitable situations they come as hostile different things hallelujah I'll never forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor final year student some years ago he had a very serious issue with the supervisor and the supervisor would not even look at him and somehow somehow people began to mediate another lecturer was mediating and when he finally got to call the guy in, they began to talk. After insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing, he said, where are you from? And that was where a conversation started. And they wouldn't end that conversation until after three hours. That guy found out that there were certain opportunities he desired, that that student had ways. He knew his father could help out and so on and so forth. It was actually a property the man, the lecturer wanted to sell. And then he got to find out that the boy's father was a real estate agent. They exchanged numbers there. And that man's life changed. Who have you been neglecting? God is asking you a question. Don't look at your neighbor. Who have you been neglecting? Because they may not speak English like you. Because they may not, they are not charismatic as you. Who have you been neglecting? Because they don't belong to your church or they don't come for koinonia or because they are not Pentecostals huh? because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost you know there's this rubbish 
association of religious things that go on we are the ones who pray we are the ones who fast we are the ones who we are the ones who know god god will always use the most unlikely means never forget this message could it be that your destiny helper is here in koinonia sitting close to you hallelujah when my younger brother was very small he drank paint one day took a cup of paint and drank it and he fell down there and fainted created commotion and everybody was just running helter skelter they took him to the hospital but that was an opportunity because people came to greet hallelujah and there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him they came to greet my brother and finally some opportunities was trusting God for came by I'm teaching you wisdom tonight many of you will need to call your parents and tell them you stop insulting everybody that comes it doesn't matter what they have done God can still use them to be the ladder for you to step into destiny there are some of you here there are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with you swear and say till Jesus comes because of what you did to my mother because of what you did to my father they gave us 130,000 to share my my young my elder brother gave me 2k and when may God punish you for as long as I live calm down do you know that one day a door can be opened I pray every time and I tell God there are destiny partners that are attached destiny helpers attached to this ministry there are destiny helpers attached to my life there are destiny helpers attached to your life once again let me use this last example and we'll pray two people one stand here one stand here anybody you my brother just stand there never forget this the distance between you and your breakthrough is not as far as you see i don't care what it is hear me the distance between you it could be a carryover cause you are praying and saying oh god but they can wave this thing and you have done everything you know to do one day god can just send someone and they'll be discussing about you in the office and they'll say please help this person he has tried the distance between you is a destiny helper and i'm telling you it can be seconds away it can be minutes away only learn to recognize destiny helpers they will come in forms that you will not appreciate them after the grace here there are people who come and just look there are some people who just send me text messages with one scripture jokingly they did not even know I don't know them I don't have their numbers but that one scripture just gives an insight to something God has been attempting to communicate to me destiny help us we're going to cry unto God are you ready to pray God bless you rise up on your feet say the distance between me say it as loud as you can the distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away prayer point number one you are going to cry unto god and say lord i i repent of people i have neglected i, I want you to really pray and say people i have kicked out of my life destiny helpers that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now lift your voice and pray kapo shatala kapararara kam pratakatala kotosia people who would have given me relevant information those who would have connected me with helpers lift your voice and pray some of our family members are struggling aimlessly because there are people who can help kapras katala kaposo tabaya Bambra takatele kosuta, bakarie ketai, wine pressers, bakers, men who can take you to the king. It's not as hard as it seems. I am convinced 
is a destiny help by way no matter what you need financial breakthrough a miracle a prophetic word direction in your life say lord i repent for neglecting destiny help us i've let them come and pass i refuse to activate defining moments in my life pray on behalf of your family <laughs> say lord for my father for my mother for my brothers they would have gotten jobs by now they would have built houses by now they would have gotten contracts by now doors would have opened that terminal disease would have left by now my family would have been together by now but for the neglect of destiny help us hallelujah prayer point number two and i want you to pray this with all your heart he said i will restore to you you're going to pray and say lord let that cycle come back again in my life let that cycle i missed as a result of carelessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity lift your voice say lord let the helpers come again lord let financial helpers come lord let marital helpers come lift your voice and pray lord let academic helpers come the distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser is your wine baker it's not hard is there anything too hard for god to do i'm telling you in one day god can change your story in one day god can change the story of your family members restore pray restore for my family restore oh god opportunities that have been lost opportunities send them again oh god help us of destiny send them again reactivate breakthrough reactivate breakthrough hallelujah let me tell you a little story i have a friend listen to me i have a friend in abuja this guy went to abuja a poor broke person with nothing but his faith hallelujah and this guy had been praying and said lord change my story help me this guy was crying praying people told him and you said stupid boy you got up and came to abuja no house no car no nothing this guy was praying and one day it always happens one day you don't even know that's why you must be prepared he was just sitting down and a friend called him he said where are you he said come quick this guy just ran and he entered the room and he saw a big man and some people were talking and he said i wanted to involve you because god asked me to bless you ah. and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of buy some plots of land 720 million 720 million and 10 percent goes to the agents so they brought him this guy became a millionaire overnight he didn't do anything they just brought him and counted the number of people the 10 percent agency fee was what changed his life yet there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in abuja since 1990 since 1999 praying and running with complimentary cards this guy was wearing palms he wasn't wearing a suit palms and his life changed overnight brothers and sisters if you ever forget anything this night remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man it takes God who is the father of spirits to connect the lines and that's going to be our next prayer point you're going to say Lord by the instrument of the prophetic I call forth they 
that have been destined to take me to the next level to take my family make sure you are praying Lord prophetically pray those who will open doors of jobs doors of marriages doors of ministry doors of anointings doors of favor doors of lifting doors of success doors of increase doors of breakthrough make sure you are praying Pray it with all your heart. Your family story can change. You have been praying and fasting. Could this be the message? Could this be the message? Pray. Say, Lord, whether in Lagos or Abuja or Kano or Sanfara, the United States, the Caribbean, by the prophetic power of the Spirit, let there be a connection, orchestrate a meeting. Let there be a meeting. Pray. Pray. God wants to take you from this level to another. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Exploits by the Spirit. Your story can change. Activate defining moments. Activate breakthrough in your life. Come on, prophesy. I call them they are coming into my life from the north the east the south I pray for E and I destiny help us are coming we receive them we receive them we receive them we receive them hallelujah let me give you one little story look at me when Professor Madi was the Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, many of you did not meet him. There was a gentleman who did very well, but he did not get admission. Hallelujah. And the guy just went, for reasons he could not explain, he went and sat down near the Senate in the night. And Professor Madi had the culture of walking into students' hostels, walking around just to see what is going on. And when he walked, he saw the gentleman and he called him. He said, why are you sitting down here? He said, sir, look at my WIAC result. Look at everything. But my catchment area is not there and they didn't give me admission. He said, you are such a brilliant boy. Do you know what he told him? He said, go home and pack your load and come back. When he came back, they had printed his, admi his admission letter. This is true. It's a confirmed story. Hallelujah. I know about a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level. Whatever it is that happened, either his name or his matriculation number clashed. And what this guy was seeing was not his real CGPA. This guy would work so hard, but when the exams come out, he would not beat. And then one day, someone just came in and for whatever reason, the person decided to start cross-checking things. The next thing, they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him. When they called him, they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered. Do you know, true life story, when they, this guy was at, at maybe around 1.7 something, by the time they corrected everything, he was supposed to be in 2-1. In all sincerity, my cousin, my cousin was a student in this school. My cousin was a student in this school. He wrote a major exam that he got A. And when the result came out, they gave him F. This guy they didn't know. He knew that he had, he had read. But you see, sometimes, even when you have the evidence, you don't have access to the king. There are many of us that have evidences that would wipe our night time. But that access to the king. Hallelujah. And one day God raised a visiting prof who just came and he just complained and showed him everything. The man took on the case by himself until they rectified it. Look at me for a moment. What do you expect God to do in your life and in your family? It's in the hands of someone. It's in the hands of someone. That breakthrough is in the hands of someone. 
a house to complete for your loved ones to go to school let me tell you no matter what it is expand your mind tonight there are men who are carriers of miracles they don't even know there are some of you that your loved ones need some jobs they have been suffering you know that they want to change where they are working or they don't even have a job they are praying they are applying cv after cv if it is destiny help us they will accelerate your path you will jump protocols we are going to pray say lord i receive discernment to see these people when they come into my life lift up your voice and pray it takes discernment it takes discernment it takes discernment say lord let me discern they may not be my tribe they may not be my friends they may be the enemies of our family but lord grace to discern when you are about to use them to change our story hallelujah final prayer point now you're going to pray and speak over your life and tell yourself you are breaking through and breaking forth on the left and right don't keep quiet please don't keep quiet prophesy i break through from the left the right the east the west oh hallelujah i activate breakthroughs i establish it in the name of jesus by the spirit of prayer i contend against every power of darkness come on pray pray against every satanic force pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough god wants you to smile god wants you to smile god wants you to smile he wants to encourage you he wants your life to be fruitful. Satan, get lost. Be lifted, all ye gates. Let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs. I prophesy breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Family breakthrough. Academic breakthrough spiritual breakthrough breakthrough in your job let your family members smile i provoke it from the realm of the spirit i provoke it from the heavens i activate the angelic i activate the angelic let angels begin to move to every family let angels begin to move over your academic angels move over your finances angels move over your family angels move i activate the operation of angels contend with the powers in the heavens and release breakthroughs for god's people let the angelic contend with the powers that delay that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough i release breakthroughs i release breakthroughs i release breakthrough i speak it in your life i send an anointing into your life a breaker anointing a breakthrough anointing i send it into your life i send it into your academics i send it into your family I send it into your finances. Those you do not know, I cause them to arise and help you. I cause them to arise and help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Everywhere your gift is needed, I command them to begin to talk about you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I activate breakthrough for you in the name of Jesus.
everywhere your gift is needed whoever needs your gift in nigeria i stand as a servant of god i command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight 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 in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray for everyone of your family members looking for a job my god and my king tonight let testimonies rise from this message no matter how long tonight let someone talk to somebody talk to somebody and talk to somebody and connect them for breakthrough in the name of jesus for your family members i command help us those who will connect them to projects and contracts and opportunities yes they don't merit it but by the power of destiny help us i connect them to the breakthrough for the next level in the name of jesus where you have cried academically i connect you to help us professors who will help you admin staffs who will help you admin staff who will help you members in the senate who will help you whether for accommodation whether for your result whether for missing script whether for your wayek whatever it is in the name of jesus as the senate and the faculty board members meet over your results and your performance may a strange man enter that meeting and advocate for you in the name of jesus anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything let a strange man come we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come i prophesy it i release it to you in the name of jesus i release testimonies 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 from this breakthrough experience beginning from tonight i command calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us connections with destiny help us they will travel and come and meet you you will meet them on the street they will come to your homes in the name of jesus you will see them in your dreams god will connect you for every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married the husbands or the wives they are not in space they are here on earth lord we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected christ i pray let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus we command supernatural marital connections in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we bind every devil we bind every power that attempts to cause delay we set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage be released in the name of jesus you passed a road where you saw them bringing out pieces of dead bodies and at the point you passed the road you were insulting somebody yet the mercy of god kept you you would have been a cheap victim for the devil it was never about our righteousness and holiness are we together now you can get up in the morning and say i'm going to do this and that that is only a factor when you are alive listen let me tell you something god is so wise he created life and made himself the ultimate custodian of life if life were given to the hand of man to give another person you would see the wickedness of men at its apex and so god subjected every man no matter how stubborn to the law of life and death so that no man will claim in his heart that there is no god it was pharaoh that got up and made a lot of noise and bragging about the nation of israel and in one night god brought him to his knees listen brothers and sisters there are unseen battles 
that God has fought for us. Are we together? While we sleep, we just wake up in the morning and move around. He never gets to reveal to us the way that he has fought all kinds of battles for us. There are many of us by the plan of Satan. You are not supposed to see this month. It is a shock to the devil that you are still alive. Because according to the plan, everything should happen. And based on what Satan saw, there was nothing that would stop it. But they forgot about a factor called the mercy of God. At the point where hell had concluded, like it happened to Job in the heavens, that today, make sure this person does not return back. You return back and you were enjoying yourself and never thought to give him thanks. You know, people send me all kinds of text messages. Oh, apostle, you are this, you are that. Look at the mighty things God is doing. When I read those text messages, I just nod my head. I say, don't be mistaken. Don't let this body fool you. I'm a product of God's mercy. He trained me well enough to understand that if there is ever any reason for men to celebrate anything in my life is because of his mercy. I'm not embarrassed about it. I have mastered the art of taking advantage of the mercy and the goodness of God. Are we together now? Oh God, you can do this for me. Oh God, you can do this. We are a generation of complainers and grumblers. And our civilization has wired us that way. There is always a lust for more. Lord, you gave me a husband, but we are staying in a one-bedroom flat. And the Lord is saying, remember, the same person who was saying, Oh God, if you give me a husband, I will be grateful. Now you have a husband. Then he gives you two bedroom flat and you say, Lord, we need another place where there are no neighbors. I'm, I'm allergic to noise. It's amazing. Listen, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, don't turn there. When you begin to read from verse 14 down to 18, the Bible says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when your crops are increased and etc, etc, he said that you tell yourself, my power and the might of my hand has given me this wealth. He said, but thou shalt remember. Meaning it is in our human nature to forget. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. How can I forget? How can I forget, Lord? Your benefit, we will never forget. We will not forget, Lord. Your benefit, I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord. Your benefit. One of the greatest secrets of my life is not just prayer and fasting, it's not just the word. But I learned this from my father. It's one of the most priceless lessons I've learned from him. My father is a grateful man. I have never met a man in my life as grateful as my father. And I checked the psalmist and I found out that what that was the key. The Bible called him a man after God's heart. The psalmist knew how to touch God in an area where he would have to respond to him gratitude the ability to pause in the busyness of life in the busyness of wanting to be successful and say lord i acknowledge you you are the faithful one and then to begin to remember the days when you were nothing and to remember how he took you there are people for instance who have graduated now remember how many times you had to write jam and write it again and how many people looked at you at that point in your life and vowed that you would not become anything and you had no right to explain to them because the truth is you were a victim of what they were saying yet in a mystery you cannot explain the hand of the lord took you and brought you to a position where today you can stand and rejoice and say i've written my last exam how about many of us who are arguing and insulting around for promotion and we forget how that we kept running from pillar to post and by his majesty you were not praying you were not fasting you were not even expecting it god just opened a door and wiped the tears of our family our generation is a very ungrateful generation it is always easy to pick up the things that god has done 
and say, yes, Lord, but it's small. Do something major for me so that when I testify, I will give you thanks. And God is saying, if you cannot thank me for my finger, you will not see my hand. And if you cannot recognize my hand, you will not see all of me. Gratitude. The ability to say, Lord, I thank you. There is, a, listen, listen, listen. When you thank God, you not only thank God because things are nice. When you thank God because things are nice, you are carnal. You are sensory. You are thanking God because of your sensory perception. The Bible says, give thanks in all things for this is the will of God. The will of God is that no situation in your life can stand your thanksgiving and your gratitude to God. Oh, I remember. I remember where he brought me from. How could I forget? There is no level of the accolades of men that will make me ever forget where God brought me from. I look around and I see my colleagues and contemporaries. And I look at many people and I see how much by his faithfulness, he has granted me the privilege to go ahead to do so many things. I talk to pastors and leaders and I see their frustration over ministry. How they struggle, they, they, they try to get their messages free of charge for people, but nothing works. And yet, we see the glory and the grace of God. It's a reason to thank Him. It's a reason to thank Him. There was a time in my life I was diagnosed, I've shared it with us, fungal infection, right? There was no hospital I did not go to. They checked around, checked around, did everything. It was obvious my head was literally becoming rotten. Literally becoming rotten. They banned me from going to the dining hall because they said I was irritating other students. And so I would stay behind and when the students were about to go, I would beg somebody with a plate to please help me collect food. And sometimes in a bid to get their own, they forget my own. The mercy of God. The faithfulness of God. I walk around and I see people who are old enough to be my parents. Old enough to be um, 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 elderly people. And they see me and you say, good afternoon, sir. And I'm like, ah, please don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Listen. One of the keys to getting the hand of God upon your life and frustrating the counsel of Satan is the recognition of everything God does. Gratitude is the key for more in the spirit. You never are qualified to see more of God until you thank him generously. Lord, I'm collecting 100,000. Are you not faithful? Can I not collect 200,000? And God is saying, you go outside and stand in the street and watch people who will jump at 100 naira. They will jump at 100 naira with gratitude, with tears in their eyes. They will come upon the altar and testify because somebody gave them a seed of 100 naira. And here you are holding 100,000 and saying, Lord, I thank you, but you can do something more. I choose to be a grateful person. I choose to recognize his faithfulness at all times. That you thank God. You weary Satan when you thank God. Because see, let me tell you something. Satan understands the principle of increase in the spirit. That when a man can settle with God and thank God, most of our prayers, the thanksgiving we give before our prayers are only preambles. To give us room so that we now start petitioning God. So we come to God like this. Father, thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. What we're trying to do is, oh God, you directed us to come before you with thanksgiving. I'm doing it. Be watching. Now, you finish it quickly and say, God, let's settle down now. This is what I have. There are men who have walked this earth and they have mastered the art of holding the hands of God. Thanksgiving is like a magnet. Gratitude is like a magnet. God cannot resist gratitude. Sincere gratitude. Especially when what you are thanking God for is really not something that humanly speaking 
should warrant thanksgiving there are people who pay attention to every detail every detail oh god did this lord i recognize it every time i do this specifically for miracle services the moment i am done with miracle services i return back the moment i get home one of the few things that i do either immediately or later is to go down on my knees and i'll just hold the chair and say lord i thank you for proving yourself i've seen men of god come on stage and say the power of god is going to move 30 minutes later they are still speaking stories don't worry did you people fast today the power of God is going to move. Just take it easy. And all kinds of things. Yet he has honored us with his presence. Brothers and sisters, as a family of faith, we have reason to thank God. There are churches that love God, but they have been victims of bomb blast. Never for once. We transport people every week from here to Congo to Shika around. And we've not had any issue of a car capsiding and all kinds of things. We've had people here escape the hands of armed robbers. It's God speaking to us. I know you came with prayer requests. I came with mine too. I know that you came with sincere needs. But brothers and sisters, we are going to take a few minutes and thank his majesty. For many of you, just that thanksgiving will be the key to releasing your miracle. That the heavens will never open. You have not thanked God for what he did. You are not married, but at least you are in a relationship. A godly relationship with a brother whose head is correct and he loves God. That's a great blessing. Listen, never trivialize anything in your life that God has done. It will destroy you and it will keep you at that level. If nine things go wrong in your life, look for the one thing that is right. And say father i give you thanks the truth is there are nine things that are wrong in my life but for this one it's undeniable i have seen your hand and god says you can thank me i see that you were bereaved you lost somebody in your house yet you are thanking god that it was not your whole family members that died and god will say such faith such faith see brothers and sisters when you see certain people stumble into repeated cycles of breakthrough there is something they have done it didn't just happen are we together when you see god focus on certain people and arise like a mighty warrior and visit them is because they have done something that has touched him it's more than sowing a seed it's more than money it's even more than praising and dancing praising and dancing are only expression gratitude is from the heart you use praise dance your seed and etc as an expression is god speaking to us i have learned the danger of refusing to thank god when god gives you a thing and you do not thank him that thing starts diminishing in your life I don't care what it is whatever you do not thank god for will start diminishing mysteriously from your life because it means that you do not qualify to have it i will not forget lord your faithfulness how can i forget lord hallelujah I remember we meet we meet once in a year as a family everybody comes from everywhere and we sit down on the 1st of January to just thank God for what he had done in the family and to speak into the year and every time all my father does for for more than 30 minutes we're going to thank God when it's his session to lead prayers we know that we're ready to sit there because he's going to mention everything and then he will pass the button to my mother and she will pick it up from there and you know women lord i thank you my son came all the way from zaria he even said he went to abuja the other time he went to this are you not faithful this, this is how my mother prays oh lord the other day was it not here in this house you did a miracle for us we thank you 
and all of us are quietly while growing up we did not understand we felt it was boredom you know these elderly people you are thanking god thanking god go straight to the point lord we thank you do this for us amen but the more you advance in life you will understand this ancient wisdom of parents that they spend time saying thank you like fools and while we young people are feeling bored they are saying it's because you've not they've gone through things in life that can eat them up and they have mastered the art of thanking God for everything it's one of the unbeatable secrets of longevity that you get up in the morning and say Lord I thank you statistic tells us that eight people die per second eight people including Christians including pastors there's a gentleman that sent me a text I don't know if his brother is in this place he will be coming out of prison in December I shared it with the leaders and he'll be coming here to testify he was a ruffian and a hooligan and his lifestyle got him into prison and he's been there I think for the past three years it was while he was in the prison he remembered that his younger brother or thereabout used to listen to my message and then he was able to get some of the messages they allowed him to have some of the messages he got born again he got serious with god he's even one of the people in the chapel the prison chapel and he said his time will be due by december and i don't know how he was able to get access to the phone to send text he said thank god for bringing me to this prison because it was that i used to hear my brother listen to koinonia messages and i would scorn him but in this place i found god when last did you thank god for all the mountains and the challenges in your life that have made you wiser and stronger and better and matured and a better leader when last did you thank god for all the gates you had to confront when you are a man of gratitude you frustrate satan because there is no way he can come the goal of satan's attack upon people is to bring them to a point where the faithfulness of god is questioned in their lives and through them to god so people say god where are you but when you get to a point where you say lord let me tell you in advance if nothing in my life ever moves forward i cannot stop thanking you when satan hears that is a nightmare because you have worried him you go to the hospital they check you and they say the bp is still there oh the bp in fact is even worse than it was the last time you say no problem lord i thank you because i'm alive i know that you gave me a word your bible your word says by your stripes i am healed you tested yourself ss or as and they say the marriage cannot hold and you go and check it again and you come out and you sing before god and you thank him Do not get into this lifestyle that many people live. I hate complainers. It irritates me. I, I, I cannot, I cannot, I honestly cannot stand it. When I stand around people who are naggy and complaining five minutes, they are talking about something, somebody, somewhere. I run away from those people because they have the ability to destroy my progress. They are not bad people, but they are violating a spiritual law for advancement. And I intend to move forward. So God helps you. He gave you 10 naira to buy a tie. And you leave the tie before God and say, Lord, this is your faithfulness. I never imagined I would get a shirt. Now you have added a tie for me. He adds a tie clip and you say, Lord, I just noticed that you added a tie clip. And God said, what sort of person are you? You mean you are doing this to me? Let him have a greater supply. And he gives you a shoe and he said lord who am i who am i i ask you for a palm sandals and you gave me a shoe i'm grateful and while you are saying that people will look at you and say you are thanking god for a tie and a palm sandals are you stupid what about the admission what about the job how long will you marry or will you stay before you get married you are 37 are you aware you say i'm aware of that keep that one aside lord i thank you I thank you for the fact that I started a small shop and people are coming to eat. I know that my desire is that I will have a restaurant in the future. But for this small shop, two people came today and ate. As a pastor, 
you are crying and asking God for members and seven people come and you don't just yell your anger on all of them and shout at them but you say Lord I thank you because these people who are coming are not yet members these are my leaders and so I will train them and I will be serious my faithfulness with seven people will bring a crowd I remember our first crusade we were very few a handful of people God did great things but we were very few but I remember thanking the Lord for it we could not even afford a video camera but we thank God for it do you realize that for some of you this is the word of the Lord to you tonight you have allowed ingratitude listen God knows we are humans brothers and sisters I taught us last week it is true that the vicissitudes of life have a way of pushing a man to a point where you are so overwhelmed I know I know that you need to pay the school fees of your children I know that nobody sponsors you I know that you have HIV and the antiretroviral drugs are beginning to fail I know that the infirmity has remained here I know that the devil has attacked your family. There are families here that have come from different places. They have come literally as whole families to come and cry before God. I understand. I will be a fool to deny the presence of that. We are humans. It's okay to be human. I taught us last week. It's okay to cry. It's okay to express your pain. But remember. Remember the things that he has done in your life not the things he has not done if there is one testimony in your life it's a sign that more are coming if god gave you one testimony remember david when he killed the lion and killed the bear when he stood before goliath he went to the archives of his testimonies and said the god who gave me the lion the god who gave me the bear that same god will deliver me that's how to confront challenges in life you look at your body and they tell you you have fibroid or ovarian cyst and it's increasing yes you are you are going through pains and you are bleeding but you say i remember there was a time i used to have a wound that would not heal and the power of god healed it the god who healed that will do the same for me please i'm teaching you how to frustrate satan don't let the devil have a toll on you. Don't let the devil mark you for ingratitude. When the devil marks you for ingratitude, he will keep orchestrating events in your life that will keep you angry, complaining. Do you know how many people die of high blood pressure and hypertension? And all of those things are caused by frustration. That you give God thanks. God gives you a job. While you are rejoicing, they suddenly call you and say, sorry, something has happened. Um, we may not be able to take the people again. And you've gone to testify in the house of God. And you turn back and say, Lord, you are faithful. I give you praise. Pastor Jakes always says he's a faithful God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Your situation, irrespective he is good everybody say god is good say it god is good look your challenges to the face and say god is good say my god is good yes my god is good my god is good i don't know about yours but my god is a good god my god is a good god i'll never forget one time when a car hit me many years ago I ran to go and buy, was it Gary or Chinchin or something? And 10 Nera was about to take my life. I think it was Gary or something. I wanted to hurriedly soak it and help myself in a bit to cross back. The devil just orchestrated it because he knew that there are millions of lives that must be changed and blessed. And he just came and the car, it was, I was, I was in the middle of the road. I didn't know what to do. All I had was there was sound of a break and there was, it was as if I was dreaming. I just saw myself at the other side of the car and I had people shouting, hold him, hold him. They said, if they don't hold me, I will stand up and I'll be mad. 
I just looked at them. I looked at my garden there. I picked it. I told them, I said, give me. Yes. I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. That night, my leg, there was, it, it swelled up for days. There was intense pain. But God is my witness. I said, I have met death and I overcame. That's why I don't fear death. I've gone through too many things in my life. I've slept on speaker. I've slept on amplifier. I've, I've, come on now. Muimaka Sujada Muimaka 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 Sujada Muimaka Muimaka Ninaimaka Sujada Lord I give you I give you I give you the highest praise I give you I give you I give you the highest praise. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. Very soon I'm going to give us room. About 10 minutes. And it's going to be exclusive expressions of gratitude. It's going to be you alone. I know you came for a miracle service. But father, mother, brother, sister, you're going to forget about whoever you came with. I don't know how you are going to express it, but I'll give us room shortly. You are going to begin to count your blessings and say, my God, was it not just last month I had an accident? I never gave you thanks for it. Lord, I'm, I'm grateful. I started small, but see what you have made out of my life. Lord, we started from two members and now we are 35. I thank you. I thank you. When a situation overwhelmed me, I did not know that morning will come. Yet you have kept me. That it has become 20 years. I remember when they said I had a heart disease, for instance. Oh Lord, see what you have done in my life. They said people die in our village. They don't get to 20. Now I am 60 years. I give you thanks. Expressions of gratitude. We forget many times. We forget. We are asking God for more. Lord, do more for me. But you are alive. But you are healthy. You go to the hospital and see people hanging their legs. Hanging their legs for six months. And you hear them singing praises. Day and night with their legs hanging. If you can be grateful, not just tonight, if you make it a lifestyle, I guarantee you, there is no arsenal of hell against you that will prosper. You will, you, will, you will thank your way to the throne. You will march through your challenges, through thanksgiving, until you get to the throne. It's an unbeatable secret of greatness. I thank God all the time. I thank people all the time. Gratitude. A simple but powerful secret that opens the heavens for a man. Hallelujah. Every, everywhere that I go, everything that I do, I'll hear in Sanana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my testimony. I'll hear in Sanana. I'll hear in Hope and Gajena. Abba Mama Kine. Yes, Help me, Sam.
for the next 10 minutes you alone with your maker lift your voice and cry in whatever way you can and say my god i give you thanks my god i give you thanks go ahead you and your maker for the next 10 minutes for the next 10 minutes cry before him for the next 10 minutes that you have won only you alone are worthy lord we magnify your name thank you jesus protector redeemer provider defender announcer lifter sustainer we thank you we thank you that the council of darkness has not prevailed over your people we thank you for the miracles we thank you for signs for wonders for food for shelter we thank you for your faithfulness for exalting our heads like the horn of the unicorn we thank you for miracle jobs we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you for our families oh god you have been good oh god you have been good Three more minutes. Give him thanks. Three more minutes. us to thank God in one minute thank God in one minute for ENI and Koinonia I'd like us to thank God for the awesome things he's doing let's tell him we are grateful people for giving us a platform where the sick can be healed where lives can be transformed go ahead and thank him Lord we give you thanks
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful people. We are not ashamed to let the world see that you are the mysterious factor behind our advancement. We are not ashamed to declare to the world that you are our sustainer, defender, protector, our hope, our anchor. We have no other God. We have no other place. You alone, O oh God, deserve the glory. of grace and the anointing if it ever embarrasses you to thank God then you will never see his glory if you are ever ashamed and so conscious of your reputation you are so conscious of your emoji man of God I'm a great this and that all those things are nonsense when you come before his presence you throw them aside say faithful God For the things you have done and the battles you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done and the battles you have won, only you. Find your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. Psalms 107. I already sense the power of God. We'll just read this and go straight into the ministrations. Psalms 1. Oh, 07 we're going to read verse 6 and then we'll read 28 to 30 I want to show you another mystery two mysteries one is gratitude the second listen is a mystery I've seen this thing many times in the Bible I want you to read it one to read stop just the A part one more time It says, then they cried unto the Lord. There is a mystery when a man cries to the Lord. I used to think it meant just lifting your voice and be loud. Until God opened my eyes. Every time you see them say in their distress, they cried unto God. In their distress. Crying unto God is more than talking. Crying unto God first starts with a revelation. That Lord, if you don't help me in this issue, I am finished. It's a revelation. For as long as you have options, you will never see God arise in your life. Until you exhaust all your options. And you come to a point where you say, Lord, they gave me the drugs in the hospital. But I acknowledge that is crying unto God. That you say, Lord, you are my priority. If you don't give me a husband, I cannot get one. If you don't give me a job, there is no job for me. Crying to the Lord is more than just saying, Oh God, help me. Blind Bartimaeus cried. And this was his cry. Thou son of David, or not thou miracle worker. I know you. I know your power. Will you pass me by and leave me in my distress like this? I'm blind. But I've heard about you. That you are the God who can wipe the tears of people. I've heard about you. 
that you are the one who makes the barren to sing. I've heard about you that you are the one who raised Job back. I've heard about you. It says they cried unto the Lord. Whenever you are in trouble, stop discussing. The key is to cry unto God. We have prayer requests here. Many of us are standing, trusting God to touch us. The key tonight is to cry unto God. And the Bible says he delivered them out of their distresses. Verse 28. 28 very quickly. One more time. Let's read. One to read. Again, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And what did he do? He bringeth them out of their distresses. Next verse. He maketh the storm a calm. So that the waves tear off. The waves that are killing you. That looks like you will not survive. He says God has the ability. There is something he can tell that trouble. It must hear his voice. Next verse. He says then as a result. They are glad. Because they be quiet. So he bringeth them where? Unto their desired heaven. Listen. God knows your intentions. God knows your desire. He has the ability to bring you to where? Your desired heaven. But the key, after gratitude, you are authorized to cry. To cry to the Lord is not an embarrassment. When you cry, you are saying, Oh God, let your goodness and your mercy speak. At this point, it's not because of what I have done. At this point, is if it is with my intellect, if it's with my money, if it's with my connection, I have failed. I cry to you in my distress. In the next one minute before I minister, we are going to cry to God. Listen, I told you crying to God is a revelation. A revelation that acknowledges him as your only source. Tonight you are going to say, Lord, you are the only one. You are the only one who can heal me. I know this. And tonight I cry to you. The Bible says you can calm the storm. He can calm the storm. Oh yes, he can. Lift your voice and cry to your maker. Thou son of David, let your goodness and your mercy speak over me tonight. Pray. Lord, there is nothing new about my situation. You have done it before. The Bible is full of records of your faithfulness. How you parted the Red Sea before people. How overnight you turned the captivity of men and women. Pray, Lord, I don't know how you will do it. But I know you can do it. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. Cry to the Lord. My rent has expired. I'm not working. I have no idea but I cry to you I have multiple carryovers I don't know what will happen to me but I cry to you thou oh God the lifter up of my head the one who is able to change my story I have not come to an idol it is within your power to help me oh thou Ebenezer arise for me you are my Ebenezer the helper of man God can help you listen to me God can help you God can help you they cried unto the Lord in their distress Cry unto the Lord and watch what he will do in your life. Don't give him options. Don't give him options. Lord, you are my only source. I cry to you. Pray. My only hope of entering into my desired heaven. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of our God. 
Lord, step in to the impossible, to the impossible. Lift your voice and sing inside and outside. Lord, step in to the impossible. Come on, let your faith rise tonight. Lord, step in to the impossible. Lord, step in, Lord. To the one more time, Lord, step in, Lord, step in, step in, to the impossible, to the impossible, hallelujah, the Lord is healing a lady right now. Please check yourself and you just come out to testify before we continue. I'm seeing a lady. You came here with severe pain on your neck. Check it now. Check it now. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. I'm seeing an elderly man in this place. Um, you've been having pains towards the lower abdominal region. The Lord has just touched that man right now. He's an elderly man. I don't know where that person is. Please testify. Check yourself and immediately you find out you are healed make your way to the front make your way to the front god is touching people right now i don't know who i'm seeing an ear god is touching someone's ear it's like i don't know if it's an ear issue but god is touching it right now god is touching it right now god is touching it right now please check yourself and make your way right now right now let's just have two or three of those people god is touching it right now right now doing a miracle for somebody um i'm seeing somebody that has i don't know if it's um i don't know what to call it but it's like a serious stomach issue it comes and hooks you literally you are gasping for breath when that happens to you it's like it literally holds you check yourself now you'll find out that the lord has touched you make your way to the front very quickly you can make your way right here Miracles are happening. Come on, give Jesus praise. Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. God is touching people right now. Can you give Jesus praise? God is touching people. God is touching people right now. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. You see like a black object. It comes and goes. It's like a, it's, it looks like a needle. Like a black object, you'll be looking at people and then you'll see it. This has happened for a while. But God has touched you right now. Who is that person? Make your way to the front. Right now. I'm seeing someone's left leg outside in the overflow. There is someone with a left leg issue. Left leg is like you came towards the, 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 um, this area where I'm holding. I'm seeing the power of God touch that area. Check it right now. Check it right now and confirm your healing. And make your way to the front check it right now confirm your healing make your way to the front hallelujah have they checked themselves sir? you've checked yourself okay so quickly we'll just take two or three you can turn please come up come up let them come up when you come you can stand please come up man come up sir go ahead just tell us quickly straight to the point praise the lord uh, i have an ear issue and it normally scratch me sometimes okay and i'm feeling better by completely give right jesus now. praise hallelujah give jesus praise it never returns to you in the name of jesus yes sir please let's celebrate jesus celebrate what he's doing awesome. 
Yes, for some years I have been experienced pain here. Pain he, at yes. the lower abdominal yes, region. Abdominal yes. yes, you know, I gave now, a word of knowledge yes. that there was somebody in lower abdominal region. Better. And how, how about better. now? Exactly, it's better. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we declare that it is perfected. Wow, the power of God is coming on you. It's perfected right now. Never to return to you. In the name of Jesus. Please check it, sir. Check it. Check it right now. Check it. It's Check getting it. better. Yes. And pain. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling you will better. be perfected in the name of Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. For the past two weeks now, I've been having ear pain. Ear it's pain. A, it's an attack. Okay. I have cold. I have kata. So, this thing blocked my ear. I don't used to hear very well. So, now, I'm, I'm okay. Completely. Yes. Madam, what the Lord is bringing increase for you. I'm seeing attack. I'm seeing a serious attack. Your money has gone down. Yes. Because this, this I'm seeing this has to do with, I don't know if you sell hair or you are doing I, something. I have salon in center. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it's like an attack. This thing yes, has gone down. People are not even coming the way it used to be yes. before again. Is that true? Yes. The Lord is saying, I should tell you in this miracle service, a restoration comes for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the restoration comes for you right now. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. God is visiting situations right now. Visiting situations right now. Go ahead, please, quickly. I want to thank God because I've been having serious pain on my neck at times. Neck pain? Yes, okay, the lady I said with neck pain, how long? It's like, it's for months, it comes and goes. At times, it's like my entire head, my ear, it affects my ear, but... When you were speaking, I, I just turned and I felt it was gone. You felt it was gone. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady, while they were giving a testimony, there's a lady here. You felt like a cold sensation. Something just came upon you right now. It's a miracle that God has given you. Who is that person? Come out. You are in this row. Where are you? Come. You felt like a cold sensation. Something just came over you. Come. Come. This night, God is bringing restoration. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing bring restoration for her right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tremendous restoration. I'm seeing a crown being put upon your head. Are you together? Are you together? I'm seeing a crown. Oh, you felt the same thing. I'm praying for you. Madam, the Lord is averting CS. The Lord is averting CS because, you see, the anointing is on you. The Lord is averting CS. I'm seeing a spirit standing by the theater. And I'm seeing that this is even supposed to destroy this baby. That they say this baby comes out and is affected. But the anointing of the spirit is upon you right now as I'm speaking. And I release the power of God right now. Let that demonic substance out of her. Now. Out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere Right now Is your family here? Is the time for the visitation? Where is our family? Please come There is a whole deliverance for a family that God is doing here right now I see that family Please where is our daddy and our mommy? Please appreciate them as they come Enough of the nonsense of darkness. Please celebrate them as they come. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Lord, we see miracles everywhere. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Sir, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a cause. This is what I'm seeing. As I look at you, the Lord is showing me this is a cause. Number one, it has tied down your finances completely down. This thing is so embarrassing, it has tied down everything. I don't know who is it in your family that has dreams. I see dreams of someone chasing somebody. I don't know which of your children or who now. But I'm seeing one of those people have dreams. That's their daughter. You see the power of God touching her. She's their daughter. She's the person with this case I'm mentioning. I'm seeing dreams and it's like people pursuing the person. This thing started right from your family and this is already following this lady because I'm seeing now that the devil wants to put fibroid in her stomach. It's starting now as pain 
I, I remove that fibroid right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I cause that seed of fibroid by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm seeing this woman crying before God in prayer this is what I'm seeing this woman has been a defense I'm seeing her crying before God and saying Lord will you not wipe our tears in this family but tonight we see miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, right now. We see miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now. There are many people who can help you. But every time they want to indicate helping you, something just comes and nobody is willing to help you. Because I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing a body but I'm not seeing a face. This thing has covered your glory. Whoever is supposed to help you misunderstands you. And for some reason, they, uh, they don't help again. Hallelujah. Who is Adamu? I'm hearing a name, Adamu. Adamu, I'm hearing something that has to do with Adamu. Adamu, please help, help those on Adamu, I'm hearing Adamu. Who is that? Adamu. Adamu. Huh? Where is your father? The person I'm talking about, his father's name is the one that is Adamu. Huh? What's your father's son name? Adamu. Adamu. Yes. God is giving Adamu a miracle. Yes, your father, right? Where is he? At home, Nasara State. In Nasara State. Yes, sir. Because this enchantment that is done against your family enough is enough it's part of your prayer request right yes, number five six uh, number two and three yes, number two and three prayer requests yes, look at it there yes, that's sir. it number two and number three that's what you wrote Lord, read it miracle read it miracle in your family yes, that's what i'm reading what you are writing and god is giving a miracle yes, a big miracle to adamu Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I see miracles everywhere. Love is a miracle. Miracles everywhere. The spirit of God is ministering to me. I'm seeing the anointing of the spirit. I'm looking at a map and I'm seeing the spirit of God going to Yola. Yola. A miracle is happening in Yola. And it's going to this lady's family. This lady, right? I'm seeing a miracle. But there are two other people from Yola. From Yola. I see the power of God moving. Two people from Yola. It will come like a tornado upon you. It's a miracle that God is doing right there. There is a lady's elder sister who has been barren. I'm seeing the number three. Three years. Barren. Barren. Help them. That lady is from Yolan. She's an usher. She's walking. But the spirit of God. I'm seeing is a wicked demon. This is what I'm seeing. That has been oppressing her family. I don't know if she's from Yola or not. But I'm seeing that God is doing a serious miracle. Sir, I'm going to pray for you. Mommy, I will minister to you. Madam, the Lord is saying I should tell you that the crying is over. The crying is over. Right now as I speak, the power of God is coming on you. The Lord is saying I should tell you the crying is over. Right now, the angel of the Lord is pouring something that looks like oil upon your head. Pouring it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Pouring what looks like vials of oil. Now I curse this spirit. I address you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this family go now. 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 This curse that has tied down the family. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. He said for I will contend with them that contend with you. Right now. The power of God is touching people. I see deliverance. Deliverance. Deliverance deliverance fire lift your hands everybody let's just interrupt this deliverance fire right now it will start touching people at the count of three father the angels of god there are many angels in this place
bringing deliverance for families at the count of three let that fire come right now one two three receive it right now right now right now right now makaparatata bring them out lekete pratata deliverance for families outside i'm seeing the angels of the lord go outside outside the power of god is moving it's like fire coming on families it's like fire it's like fire it's like fire it's like fire We see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Right now. We see miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Father, where are those families you showed me in the place of prayer that from the village now I'm not one who just talks so much about village but this one is from the village I see an attack at the count of three one, two, three from the village those arrows back to sender shakatata leketata reketatata from the village i see enchantments from the village i see altars i see covens i set them on fire i set them on fire i set them on fire they are calling your names from the village from the village enchantments witchcraft death outside outside fire is falling what fire is falling fire is falling from the village speakings of death enchantments of death the name above all names Yahweh. we call you Yahweh. I'm ready to pray for you now i didn't just leave you i need to pray for you my god there is massive deliverance going on in this place my dear lift your hands where you are an angel of the lord is touching you right now right now mama an angel of the lord is touching you he's doing something in your husband's life your husband's life there is a miracle that is happening Madam, your time for a miracle has come. Come. This woman, this woman wearing pink. No, no, no. I mean, that one. The one turning back. Yes, you, madam, come. Your time for a serious visitation has come. Let's stretch our hands towards daddy. Bring her. Be delivered now. I curse that spirit. Go! Stretch our hands towards daddy and mommy. Let's pray for them. Father, this plague must stop. I saw a curse. It was looking like a hollow over your head. It follows you everywhere you go and brings bad luck to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's over. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit I announce a new season I announce a new season mommy the spell is broken 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 in the name of Jesus Christ sir I hold your hands in the name of Jesus and I announce to you that it's a new season you will go back and experience dramatic turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ don't think it will come from all the channels you are planning unusual sources of breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you madam I want to pray for do you have a daughter is she here I'm seeing one of your child here. Where is the person? A girl, a lady. A girl, yes. A lady, where is she? Please call her name, let her come. Daughter, where are you? Who is the person? She's wearing something like traditional dressing. Who is that? Come. This has been your desire that God will visit your family, right? It's been your desire, it's been your prayer yes, sir. that God yes. will visit your family. Yes, sir. And tonight God has chosen to step in. See, it's an awesome thing when the light of God turns to you. Then you know that your situation has come to an end. I mustn't call you. It's not just by word of knowledge. It's not just by word of knowledge. lady is going to vomit something I'm seeing something that looks like a snake moving in her stomach this is like I don't know if it's poison this is something that has been put to this lady I curse that devil I curse you back to hell back to hell from where you came from hallelujah mommy please stand up let me pray for you man you can stand up please I want to pray for you. God is going to bring dramatic breakthrough to your life. Please, I want you to note it. Dramatic breakthrough. It will so surprise you. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, captivity comes to an end. I release supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And for you, supernatural breakthrough. Mama, I pray. The Lord told me that... The tears have come to an end. He's wiping your tears. Father, thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Remember not the former things the Lord says I should tell you. In this season, he's doing new things. He will change the heart of your husband in a way that you never imagined. He will do this for his glory. The spell of bad luck over your life is broken. Bad luck. There's something about your life that makes people hate you. It's a spirit. And there are people here. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm praying for you. Whatever makes people hate you for no reason, I want you to know that it's not normal. You will see what will happen right now. There are people here. I know that people have those kinds of things. But there are people with those things. It's like an aura on you. As I was ministering to her, the Lord said, minister to the house. Father, where are they? right now in the name of jesus let the anointing locate them inside and outside that spell of bad luck right now right now in the name of jesus right now in the name of jesus right now in the name of jesus right now in the name of jesus, right name of jesus. justina the lord is bringing miracles to your family miracles to your family i'm seeing a lady from is it oka Oka, that should be east. I'm, I'm, Oka, is anyone from like that? I'm seeing a lady. Our minister generally will pray for the sick now, but I just want to flow. Oka, Oka, is there someone like that? Please, if you are like that, you can make your way to the front. The Lord wants me to pray for that family. My dear, you with a white hair tie. That lady, you turning back, lift your hands where you are. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but God is destroying an embargo over your life and family. Lord Jesus, I destroy it right now. In the name of Jesus, where you are standing, I destroy it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are from there? You are from Oka? Where is that? And 
Anambra State. Anambra State. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. You're also from there? Huh? Make your way to the front. You are from there too. Three of you. Look at me. You cannot be a victim. You and your sisters of the wickedness of people in the village. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hold my hands. Father, it must end. This must end. It must end by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is, I'm seeing enchantment. This is, this is witchcraft to produce consistent failure in life. You and your sisters, I pray for you. Father, you are going to visit them in this season. You are going to visit them in this season. In the name of Jesus. I want to minister to you. You are from there, too. Come stand. The Lord gave me that word and said to minister to the people. As I lay my hands and minister to you, I want you to know that everything that does not represent God, uh, and everyone pursuing you in your dream and disturbing you, it must end in the name of Jesus Christ. For you, there is, there is, I'm seeing something that looks like a crown in your head. We must remove it because it's not God that put that crown. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil is a liar. Take it off of her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is your mother, my dear? Huh? Abia State. Abia State. We are going to pray for you. Tell your mother that a deliverance is coming for her. Then a breakthrough. Deliverance first, then breakthrough. For the deliverance, she will see it in a dream. It's like something will be chasing her to catch her and she will see somebody who will snatch her out. It's a dream connoting deliverance. Father, visit this family. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. You are a student here? Huh? Yes. We must pray for you. So that the spirit that destroys men when they are about to finish. Huh? In your family, we must stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glorify yourself, O God. I curse this spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Before I begin to minister to the sick, God is bringing deliverance to families right now. We are going to shout Jesus at the count of three. This is not just to you, but God is stepping into families. Some of you never knew that what is happening physically in your family is as a result of all kinds of things. Devils, lift your hands everybody. At the count of three, you shout Jesus at the top of your voice. And the power of God will move mightily in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you step into families and end every oppression and every captivity. Right now, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, every family, shakatatata, under any demonic siege, my goodness, the power of God is already touching people. Right now, at the count of three, let that shout be like a chord in the spirit. One, two, three. Be delivered now, now, now. Now, altars be broken. Altars be broken over families, over families, inside and outside, and those following online. I break it right now. Every family under any spell, every family that's right, Kaba Takata, bring them out. Shakatatata every family under any spell oh you must leave them you must leave them i speak to those spirits hear my voice in the name of jesus there is no hiding place for you you must go you must go you must go it's time for their deliverance you must go Hallelujah. My goodness, God is doing miracles right now. God is so, help that lady, please. Help them. Sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray for just the sisters. Something remarkable will happen right now. Remarkable. There is a spirit 
that put women in bondage because when one woman is in bondage it can affect a thousand men there are ladies oh my goodness the fire of god will move not small sisters lift your hands lord by fire as the sisters cry that spirit that seraph that follows ladies and causes them visiting them in dreams as you shout jesus my goodness i pray that those fallen spirits that will not let you go that did not keep the original estate they will be judged right now father locate every one of these sisters right now one two shout jesus right now right now right now right now right now those spirits go 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 lift your hands there are people here strange dreams strange dreams in the night you sleep in the night and you have all kinds of strange dreams from men or women or animals coming to sleep with you or people tying your legs and you see what is happening in the day whether you believe it or not is not the issue I want to settle those things right now lift your hands Lord where are these people from the dream realm from the realm of the spirit as you shout the name Jesus anyone under this condition some of you that's what is responsible for masturbation some of you that's what is responsible for pornography some of you that's what is responsible for delay lift your hands father those spirits that use the realm of dreams and visions and manipulate destinies manipulate the stars of your people at the count of three we set them on fire fire comes upon you now many guys will be affected one two three oh i bring you deliverance in the name of jesus i cause those spirits causing delay you must leave now 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 Go, 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 go. Part two of them. That spell of delay must leave. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. I'd like you to pray and cause delay from your life. In the next one minute, open your mouth and say enough is enough. I must move forward. Pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. It's called a miracle service. It's called a miracle service. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of delay. yes 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 prophesy i'm moving forward this is the ninth month by the blood of jesus i'm moving forward i'm moving forward under this anointing hallelujah hallelujah i like you to shout after me Say in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every obstacle standing between me and the next level by the blood of Jesus, I bring those gates down. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Gates of limitations standing before me and my desired heaven 
gates of limitation standing before me in the name of Jesus gates of limitation standing before me and my desired heaven outside make sure you are praying pray you will return with a testimony you are praying under a corporate anointing hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus everything that belongs to me and is not yet in my life in this season by the power of faith I command them to manifest open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and pray come on koinonia everything every lifting every glory that belongs to me and has refused to manifest by the power of faith even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus every legal access every claim the devil has over my life over my family by the blood of Jesus I declare that I'm free by the blood of Jesus I command my liberty I declare that the price for my freedom has been paid therefore Satan stay off my life open your mouth and begin to pray stay off my life the price has been paid by the death of Jesus every cause every yoke every spell every enchantment by the blood of Jesus pray Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me carefully. I'm doing this by the Spirit. Listen, many breakthroughs are happening to people just from this simple prayer. I wish that God could open your eyes to see the things that are happening to people. You are, this is not just your normal prayer. You are under a heavy anointing. Listen, human beings have prophetic atmospheres. The ark of God came into the house of Obed Edom and brought him good. Jonah entered a boat and made people to be destroyed. Listen, some of you are good people, but you are carrying a spiritual atmosphere that brings bad luck to you and everybody connected to you that's what prophets sometimes will see and because they don't have discernment they call people witches and wizards they are not witches and wizards they are sincere people but they carry a spiritual climate that everywhere they go it makes certain things to happen do you understand now some of you are sincere people but you are carrying atmospheres that makes everything around your life to fail we are going to pray say after me in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus this is a strong prayer this simple prayer you are saying you will see the result instantly I like you to pray and say every atmosphere that I carry that does not come from God and is responsible for bad luck and misfortune in my life tonight I declare 
let that atmosphere change lift your voice and pray seriously lift your voice and pray seriously every negative atmosphere kaparatata pray miracles are happening pray every negative atmosphere pray that brings bad luck i may be a sincere person but it brings repeated misfortunes i challenge it whether ancestral whether territorial i challenge it i change my spiritual climate by the blood of jesus hallelujah two more prayer points and we'll pray for the sick hallelujah we are going to pray a prayer of restoration do you believe in restoration nothing is ever truly lost it only leaves your presence I like us to pray yeah that's the song everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen one more time forget about your situation just prophesy just prophesy you may not know how it will happen just prophesy one more time prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me shout it say in the name of jesus all the years all the fortunes every opportunity every access that has been lost in my life by the mercy of god i command them to come back to me go ahead and pray this is a serious prayer point all the years all the fortunes all the opportunities all the access that have passed your life pray like samson pray like hezekiah pray let there be a restoration and i will restore to you the years that the canker worm the palmer worm, the caterpillar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray the last prayer point. Listen. There are spirit entities that challenge and haunt the destiny of people in the realm of the spirit when jesus was born certain men saw his star from the east and they started following that star and the moment they announced to herod a king is born herod said ah a king he said please find where he is and tell me so that i will come and worship him but his intention was to kill him you are going to pray over your destiny Please take this prayer point seriously. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I declare that my destiny is secured by the blood. Every act of witchcraft that has tied down my destiny right now by the blood of Jesus, release it now. Pray, pray. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. 
my prophetic potential release it release it Hallelujah. Prophesy after me, say in the name of Jesus. This is my year of the rain. It's a new dimension for me. I'm breaking every limitation. Say it again. I'm breaking every limitation. And I declare that in this remaining part of the year, an anointing comes upon my life that causes me to triumph that causes me to excel go ahead and pray it lord is my year of the rain an anointing comes upon my life a speedy walk by the holy ghost a speedy walk of restoration a speedy walk hallelujah we're going to do two things at the same time right now listen if there is any trace of sickness and infirmity in your body it's time for it to die are we together now are we together now please just address these people we're going to have all those people come and line up while that is happening please i beg you if you do not write anything in your prayer request please if you need papers maybe the ushers can pass it we are going to be praying on everybody's request those on facebook some of your loved ones you are permitted to switch on your switch on your phone and tell them please send in your prayer request because god is about to do something right now while you are doing that be praying in tongues everybody be praying in tongues while sick people all those who brought sick people make your way to the front very quickly please very quickly all those trusting god for healings and miracles please just line up Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored. The devil is a liar. He must Everything let you go tonight. That was stolen, shall be restored unto you. Hallelujah. We don't just lay hands on people. I know that it takes a lot of time. But it's the way God is directing us. It's not just ordinary hand laying. It's a prophetic point of contact. Some of you are coming out for sickness. But the truth about it is that there is an oppression of darkness. Is that the mama with cancer? Okay. No, no problem. No problem. She can come. If she cannot stand, just give her a seat. Let her sit down, please. Those who are weak and cannot stand, please, you can give them a seat so that they don't collapse. The, the woman with cancer, if she, if she cannot come, just I'll minister to her. Everything that was lost. Make sure you are writing your prayer request, please. Everything that was lost. Hallelujah. All of you that are coming out, I want you to know that we are patient enough to minister to us. There are all kinds of ministries. This ministry is like a spiritual factory. It's like a spiritual workshop. It's where we dirty our hands on the job. And as I minister to us, please, I want our hearts to be open. Don't just stand watching the power of God touch people. The moment I lay hands on you and minister to you, I want you to receive you can go back to your seat. Some of you will be under the anointing. It doesn't matter. As I pray for you, you don't have to scrounge. I will lay hands on everybody. It's going to be a quick walk. It will take time. Please, when you write your request, pass it to the ushers. In case there are things, listen, listen. Let me teach you how to maximize this prayer point. Don't just write things carelessly. While you are writing, be praying in tongues. Because the Spirit of God will bring into your mind, bring you into remembrance. It may even be a matter that is not your own. You heard the story of the gentleman. Dropped a prayer point and nine months later, they are coming with twins. 
there is nothing God cannot do father in the name of Jesus I pray over your people there are powers tying down their destinies but you have put this miracle service as a prophetic platform let there be miracles go ahead all of us we can join praying in tongues while I pray for these people occasionally worship team you will help us Lord we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ look at this I don't know they can't see it on screen it's not clear this is a leg that is bent father do a miracle they didn't fix it well in the name of Jesus right now let the power of God do a miracle on this leg in the name of Jesus Almighty God, you know me, my Lord. You know me, my Lord. Out! Now you be God. Almighty God, you know me, my Lord. 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 Now you be God, oh. Point number two, Lord, I take full delivery of everything you package uniquely for me tonight. Lift your voice, I will not miss out on anything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who brought this woman, please? Huh? What's the issue? What's wrong? Chief. Hallelujah. We'll soon be rounding up. Let's just hear. No, no, no. Keep us standing. What's wrong? I'm paralytic. Nice. Paralyzed. Yes. Mama, can she talk? Yes. Mama, for how long? I paralyzed did, yes i went to the house and met she can't walk on her own she can't walk very well mama in the name of jesus christ i curse this spirit it's okay in the name of jesus mama look at me in jesus name lift your hand lift it go don't look at just lift it put it down lift it again paralyzed hand look at this look at this Mama, clear the way for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. Don't hold her. Come. 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 Turn around. Turn around. Walk. Come. Come. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Paralyze. Miracles everywhere. returns to you again in the name of Jesus you are the son that brought her you are, she's not your mom yes. but you brought her yes. I pray for you may you never lack helpers in your life because you are a young man you are not related to her yet you carried mama out of compassion this miracle is because of you 
I'm laying hands on you and I prophesy to you all the days of your life may help us be around you like this in the name of Jesus Christ for as long as your eyes can see the sun you will find a helper in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you celebrate mama God bless you Listen, miracles everywhere. Make sure you submit your prayer request. Everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. Right now. I want you to come out. I, I don't mean you want to do ministry. You are actively in ministry. Come and stand here. It's time for you to take fresh fire. Please, if you come out and you are not a minister, I will send you back. I assure you. Don't embarrass yourself. If you are a minister and you know, not just that you sense the call of God, please, don't embarrass yourself. We are going to pray for everybody. But if you are a minister, come, go ahead. Don't be afraid. We're in a season of God's glory. Please listen. We're in a season of God's remarkable grace. It takes signs and wonders. Not just grammar and story. The Bible is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. For the manifestation. Please, I'd like you to believe. I'm going to do this very fast. The Lord has instructed me. Immediately after we do that, all visitors, visitors alone. I will not lay hands on you, but I'll pray for you. And then we'll pray for the request, prophesy, and we're out. We'll do all this within the next 10 minutes so that we're done. Father, I pray. It's not by the power of man. Father, I pray. It's not by might. It's not by power. Lord, as I lay hands upon your servants, let something new, something divine, my God, I pray, activate the gifts of the Spirit in them. Activate the operations of signs and wonders. Shkabalata. Let utterance be given unto them. Let their lives, oh God, produce results. Results, oh God. Results. Signs. Wonders. Miracles. By your hand. Take the fire. 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 Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. 
fresh fire fresh fire new levels fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire new dimensions fresh grace my goodness fire is falling fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh grace fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh grace fresh anointing new anointing new dimension gifts of the spirit vision three prophecies multiplied graces I prophesy to all of you let it be a new season in the name of Jesus new season new season new season I empower you for a new dimension in the spirit I empower you fresh grace fresh grace please stretch your hands towards the prayer request unto thee that answers prayers shall all flesh come please stretch your hands is a prophetic instruction God gave us we have seen amazing testimonies if there are still people left please let them come let them drop it very quickly in one minute I like you to begin to pray Lord it's time to turn my story around my goodness as we pray miracles will begin to happen to people right in the crowd right in the crowd as I'm touching the request something is happening to you something is happening I'm seeing angels lightning all over all over all over father in the name of jesus we pray go ahead and pray everyone miracles happening in the realm of the spirit father turn these requests into testimonies the way I walk on them oh God these problems remain under our feet forever in the name of Jesus Christ under our feet forever in the name of Jesus Christ all our visitors please come out quickly if you're a visitor here visitor this is your first time
Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to us last year. He said we should prophesy and pray over the visitors. Some of you have traveled kilometers. You have traveled from different states of this nation. Risking yourself through the night. Please make sure you come. Clear the way for them. You are a visitor. This is your first time you are coming here. Make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying, people? The number of visitors that troop in every week into Zaria for Koinonia is getting so much. We have to find something to start doing around your regions so that we save some of you transporting yourself. Maybe we'll open a branch of Koinonia in all those places. Maybe we'll come to your village. Hallelujah. But seriously, we're trusting God for instructions for the next level. And I'm sure that very soon he's going to speak. But I perceive that very soon there's going to be a lot of expansion because of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Are you glad about that? Let's celebrate Jesus. God has brought you here. Your life will never be the same. Please lift your hands. Father, you have brought these people all the way. Some of them with burdens. Some of them coming to catch fire. I stretch my hands towards you. Kaborato shatabaladaba. Nandekele koroto suto prashia. My goodness, I see impartations happening to people. Those of you standing, I'm seeing impartations. It's like rain. Rain touching people. That's what I see. These are showers of blessings. Showers of miracles. I prophesy to you from tonight. Help them, help them, help them. Help them, please. I prophesy to you. Step into new levels. In the name of Jesus Christ. Step into new dimensions. This is koinonia. A place of encounter. It's not just the name of a meeting. It's the name and the dimension of the operation of the spirit. We bless you with hunger for God. We bless you with passion for the things of the spirit. I'm praying for you. You will go back with such fire. You will go back with such passion you will not recover from. I pray that everything that has not been working in your life, let it be activated tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We're here every Friday. Um, this is not our usual venue. Our venue is Christ Gospel Church at New Extension. But we thank you for coming. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart and on behalf of everyone in this ministry and the many who are joining us online that you will return with a strange miracle in the name of Jesus you will return with a strange miracle some of you even before you get home your miracles will be waiting for you some of you this night you will have dreams and encounters and the veil over your eyes will be open some of you this night God will show you what has been happening in your life God will show you direction I see God giving a lot of you direction direction for the next level you will hear his voice very accurately in the vision of the night in the vision of the night he will show you in the name of Jesus Christ we bless you for those of you who have never been here I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details outside very quickly and then you come and join us those of you who have been here and we have received you you can just go back to your seat with a blessing but those of you who have never been here you've not put down your name we need your names and details i want you to make your way here in the name of jesus everybody rise as we receive the last prophecy for the meeting now you be god you know be my name Na him be God, Almighty God, you know me now. You know two more times. Na you be God.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow morning we are off to Pogi State. We are going to be tearing down the walls of darkness. Trust God to set that territory free. Pray for us and if you come from Kogi, stand by us and tell and let's trust God to really do something apostolic in that land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now please, this for me, you always hear me say this. I consider this to be the most important part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to receive the creative power of the spoken word, the creative power of prophecy. This is where the word of God comes into you like a drug and literally, literally alters you. And so I want you to receive with your heart open. Hallelujah. Please receive with your heart open in the name of Jesus Christ. As I pray for you, I want you to receive by shouting a resounding amen. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. I prophesy no more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears. No more tears, no more tears in the name of Jesus. These hands that are lifted, I prophesy. May a supernatural anointing come upon it. Let it begin to produce extraordinary results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Extraordinary results. I pray for everyone due for promotion. And every of your loved ones due for promotion. In the name of Jesus. We cause the embargo stopping their promotion. And we prophesy promotion. There will be testimonies of promotion. The power of God is touching people. Everyone and every family called jobless. I feel like fire on my hands as I'm about to pray this. Please help them. I feel like fire on my hands. Everyone represented here and every family called jobless. Right now in the name of Jesus, I release an anointing for supernatural jobs. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Help them please. Receive it, receive it. Testimonies of jobs. Testimonies of jobs. Testimonies of jobs. Every delay in your life that has stopped you from entering where you should enter now. Makata kata tata pakata. The anointing that came on Elijah that he guarded his loins and ran. Receive that anointing right now. I cause delay in the name of Jesus. I cause delay in the name of Jesus. Everyone who has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise and your family to rise, I declare that to their shame, my God will lift you before them. My God will lift you before them. My God will lift you before them. Everyone who says, can anything good come out of your life? I prophesy to you, in this season, God will use your life to answer them. God will use your life to answer them. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Whoever needs to come into your life in this season. No, let's start it this way. Whoever needs to go out of your life this season. In the name of Jesus. If their presence has been causing you pain and setback. 
I break you free from them now. Wrong associations. Be free from them now. Wrong relationships. We break it now. Wrong soul ties. We break it now. Wrong connections. We break it now. Wrong fraternities. We break it now. We break it now. We break it now. I command them out of your life. Out of your family. Listen. Some of our parents, the trouble in their life is because they have wrong friends they will never leave. They keep influencing them to make useless decisions. I pray for every family. Any stranger manipulating the destiny of any family through the counsel of Akitofel, today we send them packing from their homes. Packing from your homes. In the name of Jesus. Until Samuel appeared, the destiny of Saul remained covered. Until Jesus appeared, 12 years of hemorrhage continue. Whoever must appear in your life, whoever must appear, Magato Topata. You hear me talk of destiny helpers all the time. Your next level comes from God, but through the hands of a destiny helper. From the realm of the spirit, destiny helpers, I call you. From the north, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, wherever you are, locate God's people. Come into their lives. In the name of Jesus. Every academic challenge. You have tried and done everything you know to do. But you need a miracle. In the name of Jesus. I release my faith upon with you. Receive academic miracles. Now, 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 now. Now. We activate angels to faculties. Angels to departments. Angels to faculties. Faculty of art, science, environmental design, medicine, engineering, administration, education. We release them now. Miracles in the name of Jesus. That favor anointing that makes men run to look for people to bless them. I pray for you. When the favor of God came upon Mephibosheth, Saul looked for him and blessed him. Receive favor right now. Unusual favor. Uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. In the name of Jesus. Before I pray the last prayer point, listen, if you're here, and you've not given your heart to Jesus Christ please I can't pray this last prayer point without making this sure because I want to pray something dangerous if you're here you've never given your heart to the Lord please listen inside and outside or you once gave your heart to Jesus Christ but for some reason you see they're already coming out follow them you found out that you need to make your ways right please our time is limited in one minute inside and outside you're welcome make your way to the front God bless you bless you they are coming koinonia celebrate them don't sit back don't sit back this is a family this is not all of you i believe there are still some people outside clear the way for them please clear the way god bless you sirs. bless you sirs. celebrate them jesus is calling you god bless you ma calling you to give you a new beginning please if they are coming clear the way for them so that they don't become discouraged motivate them clap for them Thank you, Jesus. Come, run to Jesus Christ. He will give you a new beginning. If the Holy Spirit is telling you to come out, come out. Don't sit back there. Don't sit back there. Many of you are hearing the nudging of the Spirit. 
he's saying why are you sitting down don't argue with him make your wave hallelujah thank you so much for coming out brothers and sisters i want to lead you in a prayer of salvation it's not a poem it's not a special number it's a it's a genuine prayer of dedication god bless you hallelujah lift your right hand high to heaven and say this very passionately please you are not reciting a poem this is not an article you are praying to god this is a prayer that is going to save your soul and redeem you and empower you to be great say lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i ask you to forgive me my sins i receive jesus christ into my heart be my lord be my savior from today my past is gone it's a new beginning i receive eternal life into my spirit the old is gone and the new has come in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now i stretch my hands father these ones have come to make a decision for you i pray that this decision will be permanent they will never backslide no going to the world no going to the flesh i release grace upon you to live the victorious christian life in the name of jesus christ every wrong association every company of wicked and senseless people you will not have any appetite and desire to be close to them again you will love them but you will not associate with them again i receive grace for you to edit your friends wicked and unreasonable people are far from you forever in the name of jesus christ i bless you congratulations in the name of jesus it's a new beginning please follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will have your details will follow you up in the name of jesus please lift your hands for the last prayer point i want to pray for the gift of the spirit to fall upon your life this is why i said we have to pray for them please lift your hands just a quick walk in one minute some of you have passionately desired certain things some of you have had dreams but you cannot understand god is speaking to you there are many of you that have longed to hear the voice of god you are praying and somehow you hear it but there is no clarity and direction there are some of us that are trusting god for newer levels of the anointing the gifts of the spirit please lift your hands in one minute i'm going to pray there will be a great impartation upon you all the gifts of the spirit the nine recorded in the bible and every other one that is available in god father i'm praying right now as your people shout i receive let there be mighty impartations there are people here who will carry strange fires strange grace at the count of three shout i receive one two three receive it right now right now right now right now gifts of healing impartations visions 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 prophetic encounters Kaparatata. receive it right now in the name of jesus word of knowledge word of wisdom gifts of leadership administration dreams visions entrepreneurship every gift available receive it now now please help that lady so she doesn't enjoy herself i pray for you what you could not do by the gift of the spirit go and begin to do it where you could not enter by this new anointing go and enter nothing dies in your hands in the name of jesus christ Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kete kata.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 